And just moments away from kickoff. Number two, LSU and the Blue Raiders of Middle Tennessee of the Sun Belt Conference. Middle Tennessee has won the coin toss. They will defer, so they will kick off to get this one underway. As you look at one of the speedster returners for LSU, Mr. Holiday. As Trendon Holiday, as well as Keelan Williams, stand back at their own five-yard line. Ready to get this one on a Saturday night in Tiger Stadium underway. That is Holiday taking it at the goal line. And Holiday up to about the 24 yard line where LSU will begin on its first series here tonight. As you anticipated, Doug, we may be seeing a new quarterback, first time starter. Ryan Perilou warming up tonight, and he will get his first start as an LSU Tiger here tonight as Matt Flynn with a gimpy right ankle, and the coaching staff has decided to rest him. We'll see if that goes for the entire evening, but it definitely is the case here for this first series as Perilou gets his first start. Ideal opportunity for that gentleman to start in the first snap. It means a lot when you take the first snap under center. Perilou, the sophomore out of East St. John High School just down the road, passing on first down the ball in and out of the hands of the receiver as that one intended for Jared Mitchell, the intended receiver. Take a look at the starting lineups here tonight. LSU across the front offensive line. Saran Black, it's Johnson, Helms, and hit Stewart over on the right side. The running backs... Williams, Quinn Johnson at fullback, and then Doucette, LaFell on the offensive side. Dixon getting the start at tight end. Second and ten, the give is Hester, and Hester has the first down and a little bit more before being pushed out at the 38-yard line. Hester with a pickup of 15 on the play and the guy who does it all from the offensive backfield. The thing you're going to see here is they run to the ball very well. I'm talking about the... Uh, Blue Raider defense, but when you move a lot like that, sometimes you take yourself out of position. Great call on that play. Jack Jacob Hester makes the Middle Tennessee defense pay for that move on defense. LSU, of course, has outscored its opponents 93-7 to this season in the first two games. Perilou, again from the shotgun and incomplete over the top. The attended receiver there was Jacob Hester. Take a look at the defense for Middle Tennessee. They've had a couple of uh, changes here tonight. Jones, Jenkins, Mason is getting the start in front of Hofacker, who is ill, and Walden rounding out that front four. As for the linebackers, Hickman getting the start tonight, Clemens and Carmichael at the will linebacker position, and the defensive backs, Robinson, Polite. Kellum is getting the start for Damon Nixon here tonight, and Alex Suber, an outstanding athlete at right corner. First and 10 from their own 39, Perilou under center. And Hester again as he picks up just about three or four as he plows straight ahead. You might keep an eye on the right side. You have two converted defensive linemen, Cornell Stewart and Lyle Hitt, the guys who just came over to this side of the ball this year. I think doing a pretty good job. They've made tremendous strides the last two games and, and have been graded out pretty well. LSU offense averaging 46 points a game, 247 yards rushing, 225 yards passing. Les Miles very pleased with the balance in the offense so far this se season. After a gain of four, it's third and six from their own 43. And Perilou flushed out, and he can run, and he's got some room across midfield, and he'll go down at about the 42-yard line where he's stripped up. And that's where he is most dangerous. He separates himself from most quarterbacks. He's a lot like a Vince Young. He spreads him out a little bit. You see, take that snap from center, and he takes off. This was a design play. He's got 4-5-5 four, five, five speed, and he'll kill you. You know, in high school, he threw for 12 had uh, threw for 9,000 and ran for 3,600. And that a gain of 16 there. Rick Stockstill in his second season, 7 and 8 in his second year campaign. The 2006 
Sun Belt Conference Coach of the Year. Former Florida State quarterback. We'll talk about that a little later. Absolutely. First and 10 from the 42 of Middle Tennessee. That is Holiday. And Holiday picks up about six. A nice little scamper around the left side. So far, Renee, LSU coming out, mixing it up very well, but doing the majority of their damage on the ground. And the reason why is because it's a mismatch. Uh, a very undersized defense Middle Tennessee has, and, you know, the thing is LSU's going to run right at you. They pull their alignment. There's a tremendous offset in size. You know, up front, Middle Tennessee, 260, 242, 252, 270, 268. So there's no match against the huger, much bigger LSU offensive front. Tigers need to get down to the 32 to get the first down. This is second down. And that is Hester has the first down, still on his feet and down inside the 20, down to the 16-yard line. Hester running wild so far, 22 yards on that play. And this is a good play right here, and it's just, he's just going to read the block here. Out bounces it outside, and watch number one, Brandon LaFell is downfield, and he's going to help him out with the block. That is what LSU does better than most teams around the country. Their wide receivers block outstanding. And once you get on the perimeter, uh, you know, it's, out, it's very important for the wide receivers to block. Jacob Hester with an outstanding game thus far early going. And Hester, 155 carries now without a fumble. Does a great job of protecting the Tigers, 11 for 11 in the red zone. Eight touchdowns, three field goals. That's Keelan Williams. And Williams down near another first down as Williams picks up 10. And it looks like it'll be first and goal to go for the Tigers. Good block on the edge right here. You can see that it looks like McManus came back. Good shot. Look right there. Allowed him to get on the outside. And Keelan Williams makes a pay. Gets inside the five-yard line. They're banging on the door. Early drive here. And LSU last year, last week against Virginia Tech scored on their first five drives. It looks like they're going to carry over this week as well. Good look at Williams right there. Had that incredible 67-yard touchdown run. The play of the week in the eyes of many. First and goal to go from the five. And Hester looked like uh, that one just botched a little bit on the handoff, and he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Well, Middle Tennessee figured out that one this time and just kind of jammed the front, slanted a little bit, and, and uh, stopped the play. Jacob Hester's a little bit concerned. Uh, he's got one touchdown thus far, 149 yards. He's a leading rusher for the Tigers by five. He's got uh, coming into this game. He averaged 5.7 yards per tote. And again, as you said, he's got a lot of, a lot of carries without a fumble. He doesn't put the ball on the ground. And now the 10th play of this drive. The opening drive of the game as you get a good look at Les Miles, 24-4 and four at LSU in his third year. The best start for any LSU coach in the history of the school. Hester again and plows forward, maybe gets two. Good. Dwight Smith, the tackle on the play for Middle Tennessee. And that brings up third and goal to go. You know, he had a graphic on Les Miles a little earlier, 24-4. He is the all-time uh, leader in that division, in that uh, category among LSU coaches. He's the fastest start uh, winning 24 games among all-time in LSU coaches. And on third down, LSU spreads it out. Two receivers, three trips left. Paralu looks to pass, and it looks like he's going to be brought down back at the 14-yard line. Great pressure by the big guy, number 95 or 96, Derek Mason. Check that. It's Gary Tucker, the backup at left end, got in and slipped through the offensive line for LSU to notch the sack. And that's yeah. what something the Blue Raiders do very well. They put pressure on you, not very big. Gary Tucker, uh, 6'2", 252, a redshirt freshman, comes on the left side, and he may have beat the uh, Cornell Stewart and Lyle hit on the outside. Again, two guys that are just learning that position have made some tremendous drives, but Tucker uh, stops that drive and forces LSU for a field goal. 29-yard attempt by Colt David. He's a perfect 3-3, three 3-for-3 and three. Three three on the year. Make it 4-for-4. Four four. Tigers on the board after the opening drive as LSU jumps out early on a 11 play drive that results in a Colt David field goal and we'll be back with more Tiger Vision from Tiger Stadium right after we take this network break. So after a 12 play 64 yard drive taking 424 off the clock the Tigers on a Colt David 29 yard field goal jump out in front 3 nothing. 
And David getting ready to kick off for LSU. Times also Josh Jasper and Andrew Crutchfield have also uh, handled some of the kickoff chores. And of course, under the new rule this year, the ball moved back five yards, Renee. And you know, with all the talk about moving the ball back five yards, it's only helped the uh, offense maybe gain about three or four yards. It really hasn't made that much difference. Desmond G and Philip Tanner deep to receive for LSU. And David's kick will be taken on the near side. No, it'll actually go out of bounds. So we'll have a re-kick situation. Beautiful night here at Tiger Stadium. It's a couple days after a little Category 1 kind of blew through. Free kick out of bounds on the kicking team. Five-yard penalty, re-kick. So David will give it a reload, you might say, from the 25. And they need to, uh, you know, this is, this is going to be tough now. It's going to give Middle Tennessee an opportunity uh, for a good field position on this return. Uh, you know, might look for some kind of pooch or... And G, very explosive player for Middle Tennessee. Of course, uh, just this week, Rick Stock, still the head coach, said that they're going to exclusively, or I should say 99% of the time, as you see Philip Tanner, but G number two uh, will probably almost exclusively play receiver. They had used him at running back as uh -huh. well, and they're going to utilize his services at the wideout position and, of course, on returns as well. Well, he's a home run threat, 4-4-5 guy, just a sophomore. Uh, out of Greenville, Florida, but he can fly. He had seven returns for 160 yards against Louisville. And his nickname, Ping Pong. <laughs> Only a tie division, back. Nice high kick. Stays up in the air, taken at the 20 on the near side. That is G. And G swarmed over at the 28. LSU special teams has been very, very solid as well. Chad Jones. I think you know pretty much about him. He's a guy that fans are going to learn to know a lot about. He was a 13th round pick of the Houston Astros. But chose to sign on with the Tigers and he'll be a good one. And you hear the crowd excited about this highly touted defense. A good look at Joe Craddock as he steps onto the field for the first time here tonight. Young man who's uh, had some knee issues, had a couple of surgeries, even missed uh, some of this fall camp, but has stepped in and had a record-setting performance for him, at least a career-high performance, back on last Thursday night against 8th-ranked Louisville. From the shotgun and the give. And talk about some defense. There is Stelts moving in to make a big tackle. Did not think that he might even play tonight. Has a little bit of a uh, toe issue and so we'll talk more about that as well here's a good look at the offense for middle tennessee dunbar lewis thompson nix and fisher across the front they've had a real makeshift offensive line mcnair and longoria at the fullback position cannon honeycutt and chicola is the tight end a gain of 12 on the play and of course a first down and Craddock again from the shotgun, wary of that defensive pressure from LSU. And a little bit of the option there as he pitches it out to the near side. And a gain of about four by DeMarco McNair, the senior out of Thompson, Georgia. And LSU's defense, Tyson Jackson, of course, Glenn Dorsey. We've talked so much about Charles Alexander, the man they call Cheese, across the front, and Kirsten Pittman, the inspirational player indeed. Luke Sanders, Beckwith, the linebackers, as well as Highsmith, and Xenon Stelts, Taylor, and Chevis Jackson at the other cornerback position. Second and six from their own 45. Craddock again from the shotgun and gives to McNair. McNair looks like he may have the first down before being brought down by Stelts. I kind of think that LSU was anticipating pass that time. Good play call by Craddock and company and gained enough just about for a first down. And, and let's take a look at some of the keys to the game, Renee, heading into this one. What they need to do is take the crowd out of the game, hit a big play early. You can't give up any big plays on defense. Make LSU drive. The longer the drive, the more likely something could go wrong. And uh, Middle Tennessee needs to secure the ball. Long drives, keep, keep play, keep away. No third down, no fumbles, or no penalties. Thus far, they're in a pretty good drive here, and they're 
early going. And that's one thing Stock still talked about this week was being effective on first down. That was a quote. Must be effective against this LSU defense on first down. On the reverse, that is G. And G's across midfield down to the 46 of LSU. And I'll tell you what, it is not often that an opponent this year has gotten across midfield. But first, tell us about your keys to the game for LSU. Tigers need to focus on run right at them on offense. Team speed. They're very small on defense. Uh, don't let uh, Middle Tennessee hang around. Give them the kill shot. Put them away as soon as possible. The offensive line, wide receivers need to step up. Some young guys must improve. Uh, you make your most improvement from game one to game two. And you'll see in the early going here, fellas, you can do that. That includes Ryan Perlou with his early, early uh, start here that he improves as well. Second and seven from LSU's 46. Craddock again from the shotgun. Under pressure, avoids one. Tyson Jackson then tucks it in and runs and makes it down to about the 44-yard line. Good pressure by LSU, but he slipped the tackle, or the grasp, I should say, of the junior, Tyson Jackson. You can't see him, but Jonathan Zenon is spying. He's watching everywhere Craddock goes. Now, he's going to come in and make the tackle right here. From the side of the screen, not right here. 19 makes the tackle. He's going to watch Craddock from time to time, and they're going to spy on him. And uh, different players will watch him and, uh, and stay right where he goes. Jackson, outstanding athlete. The junior out of West. Or out of Florida, I should say. Third and six now from the 45 of LSU. Opponents just 18% on third down against LSU. And that percentage will improve here tonight as Craddock hooks up with DeMarco McNair. And he gets the first down. Down to about the 34-yard line, a gain of 11 on the play. As Derry Beckwith steps in to make the tackle. McNair is a safety valve kind of guy right across the middle. You see slips out of the backfield, makes a good catch. That's his sixth catch of the season. Beckwith stayed with him. When you got a running back against a linebacker, it's a mismatch. Beckwith runs pretty well, but McNair does the damage, gets the first down. McNair against Louisville, a 78-yard touchdown play. It was the longest for a running back in school history on that reception. First and ten, Middle Tennessee moving the football against this highly touted LSU defense. And once again, the give McNair. And McNair picks up about two yards on the play. You're not going to have much success running right at the Tigers, and this is a good shot at what it looks like to run against the Tigers. Number 93 right here, Tyson Jackson is that big guy. You know, let me tell you about this guy. 6'5", 281, has a 38-inch vertical, runs a 4'840", bench presses 465. <laughs> you don't get much better than that. He reminds you a lot of a Julius Peppers for the Carolina Panthers athletically, and that happens to be his favorite player. Yeah, Jackson, eight and a half sacks last year. That was a team high. And the crowd making plenty of noise here on second and nine. Craddock hangs on, no one to hand it, uh, hand it to as Ali Highsmith makes the tackle. And it looks like uh, that one just got him back to the line of scrimmage. Quick reminder, our first quarter of tonight's game is presented by Insurance Network of Louisiana. Another big third down opportunity here as LSU's defense tries to rise to the challenge as they have all this season. Chad Jones, a freshman, in the game early. Six minutes left to go in the first quarter. And good pressure by LSU, and credit goes down at the 43-yard line when LSU was definitely blitzing from the linebacker position. Good look at Derry Beckwith, who's in to make the play on the loss of nine. This is what I say when I mean that. It looks like there's 14 guys wearing purple jerseys. Where did these guys come from? Derry Beckwith, among others, right there, shuts it down for Craddock, gives him nowhere to run. Kirsten Pittman, another guy who was the SEC Defensive Player of the Week for the Boy, SEC last week. Love to talk about Kirsten Pittman, too. What an inspiration he has been. Has missed the last two seasons here with the LSU Tigers with a variety of injuries never gave up never gave in and number 49 Kirsten Pittman here he is playing here tonight and as you mentioned the SEC defensive lineman of the week so LSU's defense does the job whistles put a hold on things here is Matt King 
the punter for the Blue Raiders. And we'll go down to the Blake field and listen in. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Remains fourth down. That's something, again, that's one of the keys. Middle Tennessee can ill afford to get themselves, you know, penalties, situations, turn the ball over. They need all the breaks to go their way. Jared Mitchell is deep to return the punt as he stands on his 10-yard line. And, of course, the rule usually, if it goes over your head, let it go. Fourth and 24 as King lifts the punt. And this one looks like it's going to bounce into the end zone, and it certainly does. So Tigers will have it on their own 20, a 47-yard punt, of course, with no return. And it's a 3-0 LSU lead over Middle Tennessee. We'll be back to Tiger Stadium with more Tiger Vision after we take this local break. LSU after the punt and a drive of 34 yards by Middle Tennessee. LSU had only allowed one drive 35 yards or longer so far this year. That one was 34 as Middle Tennessee forced to punt. And Paralu once again, and the give is to Scott. And Scott picks up a handful, maybe, maybe six, as we get a good look at the big 5'11", 230-pound sophomore out of Jonesboro Hodge High School. Beautiful night in Tiger Stadium, 82 degrees, just a little bit of a breeze and clear skies. Got a great night for football down here in South Louisiana. Good look at Paralu, the top high school prospect in the entire country coming out of East St. John High School. And he's flushed out of the pocket and throws it. And that could go as an intentional grounding. We'll have to wait and see. No flags on the play as he was kind of in the midst of being brought down. He was out of the tackle box, so uh, there is a... There is a flag over there. But he was out of the tackle box, so uh, we'll see what comes of this. And they do indeed rule intentional grounding on Paralu. You know, Paralu's a, a guy who last year played in five games, just completed one of four passes, 10 yards. Intentional grounding. Number 11 of the offense. Quarterback was out of the pocket, but the ball did not cross the line of scrimmage. That's a loss of down to the spot of the foul. Third down. And we'll take a look. You know, Paralu, uh, a lot of uh, potential as we see it again. Yes, uh, definitely down and the ball did not cross the line of scrimmage. But the big thing with him, he just needs to get more experience. The potential is through the roof. Oh, I tell you what, he could be unbelievable. You know, he was... He excels in everything, in basketball, football, baseball, uh, you know. He's a dangerous runner. Again, he's very, very close talent-wise to a Vince Young. Got a couple of years left to go, but he needs to be more patient in the pocket, go through his progressions, and he's getting better. The coaches see a lot in the last couple of games of the uh, progress he's made. On third and 11, Paralu, a little bit of contact, pass complete. It's a big one up to about the 43-yard line. A great grab up there. A gain of 24 as Demetrius Bird hauls that one in. And Bird making a nice grab, his third of the year, and definitely the longest as well. Runs a post and gets inside between the DBs. Good coverage, but uh, a great throw and catch. Demetrius Bird comes down with it, and boy, I tell you, he's going to be a good one. He is going to be very special. Again, one of the many, many receivers that LSU possesses with great downfield speed. As I say, a gain of 24, first and 10 from their own 43. Back to the running game. Scott plows ahead and picks up about seven yards. As Scott, a bruising, bruising running back, you know, back last season had a 100-yard game against Tulane. And this really is, you talked about in the pregame show, a running back by committee. There are just so many guys back there with a wide variety of talent they can really do a lot of damage. And they bring a little different wrinkle to the party, if you will. We may talk about that. This is something LSU has been doing for decades. This is not a new concept. Running by committee had a lot of success with it way back in the 60s. And Middle Tennessee showing a blitz on that one. Paralu is still on his feet and making a run for it. Has the first down and then some as he gets inside the 40-yard line. A gain of nine on the play. Alterman Audio offers the best brands of televisions and home audio and doubles the warranty. Located off Jefferson and I-12, Alterman Audio offering sound advice for 34 years. And we said earlier, 
Ryan Perilou set a state record at East St. John with 12,700 yards offense. 9,000 of that was in the air. 3,600 was with his feet, so he can kill you both ways. Oh, yeah, 5,000 passing yards, and Holiday is dragged down from behind the line of scrimmage. Nice pursuit over there by Middle Tennessee as Bradley Robinson, the cornerback, makes the tackle. Bradley Robinson just is shot out of a cannon from his left cornerback position. This is the only way. You want to spread him out. You can't let him turn that corner. Once Trenton Holloway turns the corner, he will burn you. And Bradley Robinson separated from his uh, assignment, if you will, covering the wide receiver and broken tint, got good penetration, made the stop. Holiday at 5'5", 160 pounds, the runner up in the NCAA 100 meters, set the school record in the 100 with a time of 10.02, and the pass complete to Dixon, the tight end, as he gets his first grab of the season. And close again to another first down. We'll call it about a gain. Well, that one is, uh, in fact, a gain of 11 on the play. Paralou's waiting for him to make his break, and Dixon just kind of camps out right there and parks himself in the uh, cavity that the defense allowed him and made the stop, made the grab, and uh, nice pickup. Third and five. Quick reminder, first quarter presented by Insurance Network of Louisiana. Paralou going to the air once again, and once again it is Dixon, and Dixon hangs on despite some contact down there, and the Tigers down to the 26-yard line, and will move the chains again. And Paralou is getting in sync right now. You see, he's getting very comfortable. He faces a blitz. He burns Middle Tennessee with that blitz. They tried to come off the edge. He waited in the pocket, was very patient, waited for the Dixon to make his break, hit him beyond the marker, and has a first down and a nice drive. Dixon started nine games last year, a second-team All-SEC pick by the coaches. First and 10, the 27. And the pass complete, that's Jared Mitchell. Slips one tackle, still on his feet inside the 20. And down to the 16-yard line. Great second effort by the sophomore out of Westgate High School in New Iberia. And we talked about the guys that need to step up in this game. Besides the offensive linemen, the wide receivers need to really step up. You have early Doucette and Brandon LaFell, but the Trenton Holidays and Chris Mitchells and Jared Mitchells, these are the kind of players. He catches the ball, nice move here, breaks a tackle, and he's really in the open. Terrence Tolliver, number 80, is trying to help him out but doesn't know what to do. But Jared Mitchell is not only excels in football, but he's an outstanding center fielder for Coach Paul Maneri's baseball squad as well. LSU's 13 trip inside the red zone, inside the 20. They are a perfect 12 of 12. Of course, thanks to a Colt David field goal on the opening drive here tonight. Their first time out of the half. And Middle Tennessee needs a little bit of time to talk things over the second ranked LSU Tigers out in front 3-0 over the Blue Raiders we'll be back Tiger Stadium on a beautiful Saturday night after this network break LSU successful on their first two drives thus far the first one resulted in points this the second they have had the football almost the entire first quarter here tonight the tenth play of the drive right now as that is Holiday on the give, and Holiday gives a great effort and gets down to about the 13-yard line. Good kickout block by fullback Quinn Johnson, escorted a would-be tackler, allowing a lane up the middle and uh, on the outside, and Trenton Holiday screwed it up. You know, you got to touch, let uh, Trenton Holiday touch the ball 10 or 15 times, get him in space. Uh, it's, it's a mismatch with that outstanding speed. He's a pocket rocket, if you will, 4-2-7 in the 40, and a very few people can keep up with him. From the 13-yard line, that's Hester again. And Hester can't break free as he's brought down by number 20, Jeremy Kellum. Kellum, the strong safety, starting tonight actually at the free safety position for Damon Nixon. That was a trap play. And Jacob Hester was trying to hit it to the outside. Uh, it was closed up up the middle, and uh, both Kellerman and Isaac shot through. Good penetration, make the stop. Third and six for the time. LSU just over 50% on third down conversions coming into this game. From the gun, blitz coming. Paralu dumps it off. Touchdown, Tigers. Charles Scott. 13 yards on the touchdown play, and Paralu read that one all the way and found the open receiver, Scott, who came out of the backfield. 
Boy, they checked off into this, and you can see he's facing a blitz. They run a screen. Look right up the middle. Here it comes from the outside. No one is at home. Joel Scott with a touchdown catch, and Perlou with a his uh, third, fourth touchdown toss of the season. Nice throw and catch. Ryan Perlou to Charles Scott. Scott had his first receiving touchdown of his career at Mississippi State. Got another one here tonight. David on for the PAT. And that one is good as gold as Mr. Reliable puts it through the uprights. And so at the end of the first quarter, the LSU Tigers get another one. This one's the touchdown. They lead it 10-0 over Middle Tennessee will return for second quarter action after we take this break on Tiger Vision. And how about outscoring your opponents 167 to 7 in the first quarter in the last 16 home games now. LSU has just absolutely dominated their opponents here in Tiger Stadium, Renee. And a nice drive last series. 12 plays, 80 yards, consuming 5.02 off the clock. Perlou throws his fourth touchdown off of the season to Joel Scott. It went 13 yards. Extra point was good. And uh, you may throw this in. Cole David is 22 extra points away from being the career leader at LSU in that category. As you get a good look at Desmond G. Back to return the kickoff for Middle Tennessee. LSU last week against Virginia Tech, the ninth ranked team in the country, the largest margin of victory in school history against the top 10 team in that 48 to seven final. And LSU right back at it tonight against Middle Tennessee. And David once again to kick off for the Tigers as he handles the duties here tonight as well. Tanner is also deep. And taken at the seven-yard line, that is Tanner. And up to about the 23-yard line. Check that, it's G. Tigers go to a nickel package. First down from their own, 23-yard line. And Craddock, who's had success tonight, but he is bowled over. Kirsten Pittman shot like a rocket from the right end position. Kirsten Pittman with nine tackles, eight last week. SEC Defensive Player of the Week. He came from the outside, really pinned it back and came. And you talked a little bit about it. You know, he missed the last couple of seasons. Uh, he had, uh, he had a cyst on his ankle in 2006, Achilles tendon injury in 2005. He has worked very hard and has respect of his teammates and coaches to get back to where he is. And Craddock, after a loss of five, back in the shotgun. LSU showing blitz once again, and Stelz comes in. And good misdirection by Middle Tennessee, but not much success as no gain apparently on the play. As Tanner perhaps gets a, a gain of one. They try to run a zone blocking against LSU and they just fill in the creases. Good play by Beckwith and company. LSU just runs to the ball so well. Not only do linebackers and defensive backs and down guys run so well. Tyson Jackson, Putt Dorsey, uh, Alexander, Favorite, Pittman, they all run so well and they're so deep they can interchange the defensive linemen and, and not miss a beat. Blue Raiders need to get out to the 33-yard line to get the first down. It's third down. Craddock to the near side. That's Tanner, and Tanner's tripped up. And that's Chevis Jackson coming in from his right cornerback position. A gain of eight and another punting situation for the Blue Raiders. You know, the quarterback situation for LSU, Xenon and Chevis Jackson. This is their 17th start as a tandem in the LSU defensive backfield. Good play by Craddock. The right play call just didn't get enough yardage for the first down. And David DeFata in to punt for Middle Tennessee. Ten punts this year, an average of nearly 37 per. His longest has been 48. He stands at his own 15-yard line. And deep to receive for LSU is Jared Mitchell. Plays center field. He should be able to haul this one in pretty easily. 
nice high spiral and a fair catch and he'll let it bounce and it'll roll out of bounds at the Tigers 39 yard line. So early action here second quarter from Tiger Stadium. The second ranked LSU Tigers leading Middle Tennessee 10 nothing. We'll be back with more after we take a network break. LSU has had the football for the great majority of this contest here in the early going. Of course, we're just early second quarter, but they've had two long sustaining drives that have both produced points. Paralu from the shotgun and the handoff. That is Williams. And Williams gets out to about the 45, make it about the 47 after a gain of seven. Keelan Williams is, uh, you know, a great runner, and, you know, he likens his style to a Ladanian Tomlinson or a Larry Johnson, a Kansas City Chiefs. Good cut right there off the block by Cornell Stewart, picking up positive yards. Good body lean, yards after contact. He does it well. Paralu flushes it out to the left side. That is Jared Mitchell, and Mitchell has the first down and a little bit more as he gets across midfield down to the 45-yard line, a gain of nine as they're once again into Blue Raider territory. Watch makes this play work right here. Number two, that block. Without that block, he does not get up the field. Good blocking downfield as well by Demetrius Bird. But uh, Bird right there with a good block and downfield. Uh, Brandon LaFell, two outstanding blocks from his wide receiver teammates that allows him to get up the field. Interesting tonight. Haven't heard much out of our friend Early Doucet. Well, he's, he's a... A big play waiting to happen. Isn't that the case? Again, first down from the 45 of Middle Tennessee. Paralu steps up. Interception, the first turner over the year for LSU. And coming up with the interception and getting his way down to the 43-yard line, down there at the bottom of that pile, is number 32, Dana Stewart, who made the play from the safety position. And he locks in. You can see, look, the guy is watching his eyes, watching his eyes as he steps right in front. He did not see the guy. Comes up with an interception, runs it back, and I guess Paralu, he just wants to make sure this guy is not going any further. But he just locked into his receiver, and, and the... Uh, Defensive player just read his eyes. Well, we figured it would happen sometime or another. And so LSU does commit its first turnover of this 2007 season. But the crowd wants to get it right back. G in motion, and he gets the handoff. And it, can he get around the outside? Not quite, as he won't even get back to the original line of scrimmage. Great defensive pressure as Tyson Jackson was hunting him down. And you can see who spreads this out, number 93, Tyson Jackson. As you see, big 6'5", 293, spreads it out and does not allow G to turn the corner. And G is a pretty quick guy when he turns the corner. Four, four, five speed and explosive kind of guy, but they don't allow ping pong to turn the corner for positive yards. Joe Craddock, the quarterback for the Blue Raiders, no stranger to South Louisiana. In fact, his mom, Deborah, has family in Vachery. They needed about 25 or 30 tickets for some family and friends down here. Used to spend some time down here in South Louisiana. Good following tonight by Middle Tennessee. And the LSU defense rising to the occasion again as Kirsten Pittman, Derry Beckwith, and company. And, of course, the big guy, Glenn Dorsey, the senior, He's right there in the mix. Great front penetration does not allow the Blue Raiders to get anywhere. You can see Glenn Dorsey was the first to arrive right there, followed up by Pittman and company and Derry Beckwith. But look, big number 72, Glenn Dorsey. We talked about him. You know, he had a chance to go to Michigan, Miami, Oklahoma, settled in at LSU following his career at Gonzales, East Ascension High School. Well, he is a tremendous player. And he, they think he may be in a top five in the NFL draft in April. He will definitely be playing on a big level next season on Sunday. Tigers only allowing a yard and a half per carry on defense. This is third and 16. Craddock in a passing situation. The pass complete, that's McNair, but he will not get the first down as he's tackled up at about the 37-yard line of LSU. Got to think that's a blown assignment because... Uh, there's no one within five yards of McNair as he's out in the flat. Linebacker Derry Beckwith was the closest, but uh, catches the ball first down for Middle Tennessee. Just short, actually. Oh, I'm Renee. sorry. You're right. That's Just right. a couple it yards short. It was a gain of 17 on the play, but two yards short of a first down, and it looks like... 
The Blue Raiders are going for it, and it makes perfect sense. I, I agree with this decision, and they feel like they have to make a statement here. They need this. There will be a timeout before action. And the crowd getting very, very vocal. Well, LSU's defense trying to rise to the occasion once again. They lead it 10-0 here early second quarter. We'll take a network break right here on Tiger Vision. LSU's third-ranked defense in the country trying to shut down this Blue Raider drive as they're going for it on fourth and two. Rick Stockstill and company trying to get the first down and keep the drive alive. Rick Stockstill was once a quarterback at Florida State in the, between 77-81. Uh, Played in the Orange Bowl against J.C. Watts in Oklahoma. J.C. Watts touchdown and a two-point conversion in the final minute 47 in the 1981 uh, Orange Bowl. It came away with an 18-17 win. Oklahoma over Florida State. Rick Stockstill, former Seminole quarterback. And the LSU defense trying to get some noise out of the crowd. Fourth and two from the Tiger 37-yard line. Craddock's pass is tipped, and it's up in the air, and it falls incomplete. Tigers will take over on their own 37. Nice defensive play. And you're looking at number 33, Tyson Andes. Came in and got a hand on the football. Looks like it might have been redirected somewhere near the line of scrimmage. And one of the big linemen got their paw. Might have been a Glenn Dorsey, Tyson Jackson as well. Got a, got in on that play. And that fourth down falls, or, falls on the side. And here LSU now. New life here with uh, 9.59 to go in the second. LSU, you might know, on a 14-game winning streak here at Tiger Stadium. One more win tonight. We'll tie the longest since the 71-73 season. Paralu intercepted on the last one. Goes downfield deep. Open receiver. The pass is complete. Hauling it in number two, Demetrius Bird for the touchdown and a quick strike. 63 yards for the Tigers. Actually underthrew him just slightly. Bird had to slow down to get that one, Renee. Ryan Perilou coming out of East St. John High School. They say he may have had the strongest arm in the country. Throws it on a go route to Demetrius Bird. Demetrius Bird just kind of looks like the defensive back may have gone for the ball and didn't see where he was exactly in his uh, position with the wide receiver. Demetrius Bird comes up with his first touchdown catch of the campaign, his second grab. Of the game. A 4 3 speed burner, and he puts the burners on that one. So the Tigers now 17 0, and we'll be back with more Tiger Vision after this network break. Ryan Perilou bounces back after an interception and hooks up with Demetrius Bird, the transfer from Pearl River Community College, his second catch of the night. And this one, Renee, was a big one, 62 yards. Ryan Perilou, his second touchdown toss of the game, his fifth of the campaign. And Demetrius Bird, great acceleration, just runs away from the defensive back. Just good catch and run. And boy, he is going to be very special. Great size. And 6195 junior transfer, and boy, he's going to be special. Boy, Tiger's not afraid to go deep on first down as Perilou just puts that one right in the breadbasket for Bird. And Bird with that 4 3 speed just has to even slow down just a touch, but puts on the afterburners. 17 0 LSU. And that is G who takes it at the five. Things you love about basketball. About the 23 yard line. A return of 18 yards. You know, a lot of people thought Craddock would go to baseball route when he came out of Birmingham, Alabama. It was an all-metro baseball pitcher and shortstop. And well, he's a good one. He had 6,600 yards uh, for his career. 100 touchdowns in a three-year starter at, in Birmingham, Alabama. Had that huge game against Louisville. 14 of 26 for a career-high 290 yards. And no running room whatsoever for Middle Tennessee is Tanner, the ball carrier, and came face to face with uh, Tyson Jackson, who was not about to let him get 
down the road whatsoever. You know, the thing about Tyson Jackson, he'll tell you that. He knows Glenn Dorsey's moves and vice versa. They know each other. They've played together for so long. And Tyson Jackson, another highly recruited guy, could have gone to UCLA, Florida, Florida State of Auburn, decided on the Tigers out of West St. John. And well, I tell you, he's a tremendous, tremendous talent. Ten and a half career sacks. After a gain of one, it's second and nine. Braddock dumps it off into the flat. No, it's incomplete. Intended receiver was Tanner once again. Tanner had a big game against Louisville in that game where the two teams combined for, my goodness, what, almost 1,300 yards and 13 touchdowns. Well, you know, he's he's very special. You know, Tanner could be a, a, a breakaway guy. They like in his style, Doug, to an Eric Dickerson. Got high knee action and four under 4-5 four, speed and you know, get him out in the open in space, and that's really, he's got uh, not great vision, but he, he runs. He's got great instincts for a running back. Yeah, as you said, could play defensive back last year. They needed him at running back this year, and here he comes. What an ex excellent athlete able to go on both sides of the ball. Craddock on third down and nine, and pressure, and he's dragged down. The big guy, Glenn Dorsey, oh, yes, he does, makes the sack, and... Boy, the Tigers have now registered a sack in 22 consecutive games. And big number 72 blows up that defensive line. A little stunt. He gets his second sack of the season. And he's that ringleader up front for the LSU Tigers. Well, the people who wear purple and gold, glad he gave up the NFL and came back for his senior season. They hope it means something. And he'll still have a chance at the NFL when he plays for pay. He'll be a very highly uh, drafted player next spring. DeFatta standing at his own four-yard line has punted twice here tonight for a 40-yard average. Standing at the 45 for LSU is Jared Mitchell, the center fielder on the baseball team. And this one is a fair catch. And Mitchell does make the fair catch at the LSU 45-yard line. Let's LSU, of course, leading 17-0 here as we're at just a couple of ticks over eight minutes to go in the second quarter. LSU against Sunbelt competition, a perfect 30-0. and And, of course, this is not the first meeting between these two teams. They met back in 2001, and that was a 30-14 to victory for LSU. You know, you had a good look at uh, Ryan Perilou, and, uh, you know, Perilou was a multi-sport athlete at East St. John. He led the team to the top 28 in basketball, 16 points, nine rebounds. He averaged and in baseball. Some people thought he may get drafted. He hit 446 for the Wildcat baseball team. And of course, his strength was in football. But what a well-rounded super athlete Ryan Perilou tells you why he was the number one high school prospect uh, a couple of years ago. All kinds of good stuff coming up at halftime. Ga game day in Baton Rouge. We'll look back on last Saturday's game against Virginia Tech and everything that is behind the scenes with ESPN as they bring the, the road show to Baton Rouge. That's some real good stuff you want to stick around there. Much, much more coming up at halftime. Still 8.02 away from that. You know, when Middle Tennessee Doug blitzes, they have to that kind of disguise it a little bit. They'll zone blitz you a little bit. They'll bring a linebacker, drop a lineman. You know, those two defensive ends are pretty good. Uh, you know, a lot of speed on Jones and Walden. They can bring it. First and 10 from their own 45. A little bit of pressure, but Perilou connects. And that one across midfield and down to the 49-yard line. Making the grab there, Keith Zinger. The tight end gets his first grab of the 2007 season, the senior out of Leesville High School. But they fumble, and he's... Oh, I, yeah, I did not Middle see Tennessee, that. Middle Tennessee has the ball, so following that catch, a fumble. So now their second turnover. And, uh, you know, came into the game talking about one of the keys, no turnovers. They have two, the interception, and now the fumble. See, I thought the ground had caused the fumble there. Well, did not see it squirt loose a a until he was down on, on the field. So I'd say probably 83,000 agree with you here. <laughs> Paralu getting field and pressure. Number 19, Jones coming in right in front of him. And Zinger Catch. comes down. Both feet touch the ground. And it comes loose. No, nope, Ripped away right. from him. I did not see the ball that was, was Alex Suber. Alex yeah. Suber stripped it away. And great defensive play by junior Alex Suber, the right cornerback. So no Tiger turnovers in the first two games. Play is so under further review. And now they'll take a look at it. Wise choice. They're going to check it out. Less but this miles. could be the second turner over the year. But uh, I think when we went back and took a look at it, it did appear as though that ball was starting to come loose. But it could be ruled an incomplete pass as well. Well, his feet have to come down. He has to have possession of the ball. And we'll see from our vantage point. Paralu. Feeling heat coming from the left side from 
Jones comes down, has the ball. It's stripped away. I think this is going to be a turnover, and Subra is going to take the ball away. That's just a nice strip by the right cornerback, and I think LSU may lose this, this question on this play. Les Miles is not happy, even though he has a 17-point advantage at the 752 mark, 750. Well, we'll see if uh, Suber is successful in taking it away from LSU. Already has a fumble recovery this year. See if he can get credit for stripping this one away. Look, curl right in front, and Super just takes it away, and he's not down yet. Uh, I don't think there's any way they can re they can reverse this call. I think that's going to definitely be Middle Tennessee football going the other way. Well, as we say, if it stands, just the second turnover this season, both of them coming in this ball game here tonight. And that's one of the things that Les Miles talked about at the top of this broadcast that uh, that had really lent quite a bit to their success. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, it kind of gets you down. You see as Zinger comes down with it, he's got a pair of white jerseys around him in Subert. After reviewing the play, video confirms the ruling on the field. The runner fumbled the ball. Middle Tennessee recovered. First out. All right, so the Blue Raiders have the ball back. Of course, you know, the fans, as they boo, don't have access to what we have also, so we can see multiple replays as well, but that one definitely a turnover for LSU. Outstanding camera work from our truck. Gives us the best vantage point of anybody in this 93-plus thousand-seat stadium. And so Middle Tennessee takes over just a yard on their side of midfield. Craddock from under center, and the give is McNair, and McNair just can't find any room to run whatsoever at the front of things there. Derry Beckwith along with Tyson Jackson. And of course, this is a defense that we talked about, ranked third in the nation in two different categories, but only allowing a yard and a half per carry this season. Good look at Al Woods right there. He's a big sophomore, 6'5", 325 out of Elton. He was a USA Today first team All-American. He's going to be a very special, powerful number one prospect in Louisiana last year. 530 pound bench. Just a, just a little pup. Just a sophomore. He's going to be a good one. Craddock, the junior quarterback, now from the gun. Under a steady rush in the pass. Bounces a couple yards short of the intended receiver to Ron Henry, the senior out of Murfreesboro, Tennessee. He's got six catches coming into this game, and he's kind of a possessing kind of guy. He's not real fast. 6'1", 189. Good look at Les Miles right now. Not happy about the turnover situation coming into this game, not turning the ball over, and now he's at a, a, a plus six for the season and giveaway takeaway margin. Interesting, you know, Rene Rick Stockstill, the coach of Middle Tennessee, votes in the poll, and he voted LSU number one. Why wouldn't you? A good thing to do as you're heading into a game against the Tigers. Craddock on third down, and under pressure, and he'll be dragged down for a huge loss at the 32, Tyson Jackson, and he had some help definitely back there from Danny McRae, the safety. Danny McRae comes from his strong safety, free safety, I should say, his second sack, number 44. Get some help from Tyson Jackson, but Danny McRae excels on special teams, but he can bring the blitz, and what a special kind of player he is out of Houston, Texas, 6'1", 205, and boy, he just took it away from him, along with Tyson Jackson, and Danny McRae is really a, a exceptional athlete, just a sophomore. He'll fill that role as behind Curtis Taylor at free safety. And the second sack of the season for McRae. Deep to return, Jared Mitchell just lets it bounce. It's a very short punt that goes to about the 43-yard line of LSU. So with 6-11 to go, the Tigers will have field position pretty good near midfield. Uh, just a 22-yard punt. So LSU on first and 10 from their own 44. And that is Williams. And Williams takes nothing and gets uh, more than a handful out of the deal as Williams makes his way up near midfield, a gain of seven on the play. Good penetration by Roy Polite. You can see him coming right here from the outside. 
and uh, make that uh, Lonnie Clemens, I'm sorry, number 29. And uh, Charles Scott just adjusts his approach, bounces it outside, uses good speed, picks up eight yards, and you know, Lonnie Clemens was coming from his Mike linebacker position and outstanding vision by Charles Scott. And Williams, the second leading rusher on this LSU team, has gone over 100 yards rushing twice during his LSU career. And it looks like that will be there enough as Williams gets the first down, it would appear. Keelan Williams, you know, he's uh, he's very mo he's more patient. You know, he's more patient. Last year he just ran and, and, and stuff. He's got better vision. He waits for his, his blocks to develop now. And, you know, he's done a great job. And he's got two touchdowns in the last three outings, the last game of last year, of course, in the Sugar Bowl against Notre Dame. And, He's got a pair of touchdowns in the season opener against Mississippi State and last week against Virginia Tech, and including a 67-yard beauty. That touchdown, that dazzling touchdown run against the Hokies last week. That's right. Do the math on that. Scoring at least two touchdowns in three straight games. And making his way across the 40 down to the 36-yard line. How about that? That is Andrew Hatch who has come in at quarterback. And I'll tell you what, you want to get information on this guy, you're going to have to do some serious research. He's a oh. transfer from Harvard. He's from Henderson, Nevada, just outside of Las Vegas, and a sophomore. What he, more do you know, Renee? Well, he's got a strong arm, and okay. uh, <laughs> he eats his vegetables, and, you know, knows his ABCs. No, he's a, a very, very smart guy, football IQ, and uh, LSU's glad to have him. He's like a coach out there when he has an opportunity to play. And uh, that was kind of like a T Tim Tebow type thing. Paralu's back in as he completes the pass to the wide open receiver on the far side down to the 23 yard line. Brandon LaFell and LaFell with a pickup of 14 on the play and another first down for LSU. Jojo LaFell, he does a little comeback right here on the, on the edge, brings it in, collects himself. What a great athlete he is. Made a nice catch right there. Brandon LaFell, his ninth grab of the of the season. But, you know, he had a chance to go to Texas A&M and play basketball and football. That's what type of athlete he is as a point guard. LaFell had that breakout game against Virginia Tech. Seven carries, 125 yards, one touchdown. One of them was for 56 yards. And Paralu has to hang on to that one for dear life. And uh, looks like he may have lost perhaps a yard or so. Paralu came into the game here tonight. Seven of eight passing. Tonight he is nine of 12 for 158 yards. And he averages just under five yards per tote every time he touches the ball as a runner. So he, you have to respect him. He's got dangerous feet, runs maybe a four or five or better. So he's, uh, he's like a running back once he hits the outside. Second and 11 after the loss of one. And Perilou will pass again. Into the end zone he goes, tipped, and the intended receiver was LaFell. But nice defense by Middle Tennessee as they managed to get a hand on that one and tip it away. Otherwise, LaFell was getting ready to put six more on the board. Jeremy Kellum comes over from his strong safety position and swats it away. And I think Perilou again just locked in, did put enough air underneath the ball as he went deep for Brandon LaFell. Three fifteen to go, second quarter. LSU trying to extend its lead, 17-0. And on third down, Paralu has to run it. And still on his feet, but not enough to get the first down. Field goal time, perhaps? You know, for a young quarterback, Perilou's decision-making overall is very, very good. Well, you know, that's something that Jamarcus Russell really had to work through his career to really start making good decisions, which he really started to do in his senior campaign. Good point. Uh, and, uh, you know, the thing about, uh, well, Jamarcus, you know, actually just played those two years, and, you know, he didn't, uh, you know, he didn't make as much uh, progress his first year out there as he did his second, his junior season, before he left to be the number one draft choice by the Oakland Raiders, but uh, I see a lot of positive in Ryan Perilou. Certainly his mobility is, a, is an asset that DeMarcus did not possess. David already one field goal. A perfect four for four on the year. And make it five for five as Perilou knocks that one between and barely from 35 yards out. 20-0 LSU. Take a look at this one. 
is boop. My goodness. Right through. Boy, I tell you, Lady Luck smiled on him. No question. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm bad. Yeah. I'm bad. Ryan Paralou says, Colt, never in doubt. Never in doubt. Well, he's won some big games here. And David, 17 of 23 on his career for field goals. But LSU really has done a good job of putting pressure on Craddock here tonight, and that's something we've come accustomed to. If it had not only just got sacks, as Allie Highsmith right there, but they've brought the pressure, and, and these hits are taking their toll as a uh, sea of purple jerseys converge on Craddock. You have Glenn Dorsey right there. Another sack coming here by... That's, that's Danny McRae and Tyson Jackson. So, yeah, that certainly put the pressure, put the heat, turned up the heat on Craddock. And, uh, you know, that last drive was eight plays, 38 yards, 3.07 off the clock, a 35-yard field goal by Cole David. Score 20 to nothing at the 3.04 mark in the second. But uh, those hits eventually take their toll, and Craddock, not a big guy, 5'11", 200-pound junior. Got to look at Desmond G out of Greenville, Florida, the 163-pound sophomore as he is back to return this kickoff. LSU special teams done an outstanding job here tonight. And that one will be taken at the three yard line. Up the middle and up to about the 25 yard line as G is tackled on the play by Jacob Cotrera, the backup Mike linebacker. Sophomore out of Lafayette, Louisiana. Just about a buck 15 down the road. And Contreras really uh, done a good job. He's a big time hitter. Plays that Mike line back behind Derry Beck with. Very, very good technique. And plays good in special teams. You know, you think of Cole David and how important he is. We can think back to the game we did Ole Miss last year when he won that game with a field goal. And well, he's a very valuable member of this team. So Middle Tennessee takes over from their own 24. And Craddock under some pressure and throws this one away. Nice pressure down there by the LSU defense. Tremaine Johnson, the 282-pound junior out of Galena Park High School in Galena Park, Texas, putting some heat on Craddock. You know, Tyson Jackson exits and Tremaine Johnson comes in. Got good speed on the edge, 4-9 rusher. Good hand, uh, uses his hands very well. And you can see he just... Uh, you know, got good uh, technique on the outside, and, and his responsibility was not to let Craddock get on the outside. He did a good job. Craddock, 4 of 8 for 45 yards here tonight. And again, coming off that personal best performance in that shootout against Louisville a week ago Thursday. LSU showing blitz, and brought down behind the line of scrimmage is Philip McNair as LSU once again blitzing. And Craig Stelts right in the midst of things, but LSU certainly has been throwing a lot of different defenses at Craddock and trying to keep him off balance. Well timed blitz. Craig Stelts sneaks in from the outside, and Craddock didn't see him coming. Gives the ball to Tanner, and Craig Stelts has great explosion. Comes in with his four under four five speed, and boy, I tell you, he is the total package. They call a surfer man because of his blind locks when he takes off his helmet, but he is going to be playing on. Sunday's next year as well. And boy, he's a senior out of Rummel High School in Metairie, Louisiana. And not the only Stelts we've talked about here uh, in LSU lore. Older brother Kevin what played a, three years. My goodness, talk about uh, different builds. <laughs> Kevin was just a bowling ball as a fullback. And don't take what I'm going to say, but they like twins. You know, Danny DeVito and right. Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's right. Uh, I love both of them. But, you know, they are. They are so cloth, different. Aren't they? You know, boy, I tell you what. No doubt about it. Great kids, though. Well, Blue Raiders uh, taking a timeout here as we have a break in the action. You get a good look at Craddock, but the Blue Raider offense, which has stressed so much uh, having success on first down, needing a third down conversion here. They're just one of six here tonight. And be mindful of the fact that LSU's defense has allowed opponents to convert on third down just 18% of the time. Craddock will have to get a little mobile here, getting it from the shotgun. He'll, you can see him hit the outside, I would think. And the 12th man being vocal here tonight. Craddock on the keeper. And don't know if that was really the play that they wanted to execute there because they needed 11 yards, and Craddock probably got about four. Well, he wanted to 
catch LSU off guard a little bit. You had to figure with his mobility, he'd maybe catch with that quarterback draw. Didn't work, didn't get the necessary yards, and now the Blue Raiders will have to relinquish the ball, and LSU should have pretty good field position with just over a couple of minutes to go. And DeFato will have to punt for the fourth time here tonight as he will stand back at his own 15-yard line. And once again, Jared Mitchell set to return this punt, standing at his own 31. They're going for it. Well, they had the uh, team out there, and then they did a quick shift. Timeout in Middle Tennessee. Their second time out of the half. It'll be a 30-second timeout. Try to mix up LSU a little bit, go from the punt formation, switch it around, and see if they can mix them up a little bit and catch them flat-footed. Didn't work, so let's Either try plan B. Or, either that or try to get them to jump offside. I just uh, would find it hard to believe that they would go for it on fourth down with five to go at their own, what, 28-yard line. Well, you know, the thing is, too, if they turn the ball over right here, LSU, is it's a sure points for them going into the half, and they already... Middle Tennessee already trails by 20 points. But, uh, you know, the thing about uh, Middle Tennessee is struggling here a little bit. But, uh, you know, in their conference, they should compete with Troy for the uh, conference championship. At least that's the two top teams. That's right. The Blue Raiders actually picked second in the Sun Belt Conference by the lead coaches after winning it all last year and Stock still being the conference coach of the year. DeFata. And gets off the punt. It's a high spiral, and bobbled down there at the 42. There's a scramble for the football. Looks like LSU hung on to it and maintained possession. A 32-yard punt. And looks like perhaps uh, was that even Ali Highsmith who was down there and managed to pounce on the loose football. Coaching staff here getting together putting ahead's not real happy with that. Coach Pavito, who coached at uh, Middle Tennessee. In fact, he coached a couple of guys. He coached the defensive ends, Tavares Jones and Eric Walden. And Coach Pavito, Dale Pavito, was uh, assistant coach at Middle Tennessee. Now the special teams coach and the linebackers coach. And we've got some penalty flags down on the field. You look at the numbers and Middle Tennessee being completely almost completely stifled tonight by Prior to the snap, illegal substitution. Defense, 12 men on the field. Five-yard penalty, make the first down. Well, I can't, I can't fault that approach. You gotta try it, you know? Maybe if you put 12 guys out there, you have a shot. Well, you know, you mentioned earlier, it's like LSU's defense has 14 guys out there, and you know, maybe Middle Tennessee wanted to see if they could gain the same type of advantage. Got a good look right there at Brett Helms, the center. He's lost 13 pounds, a little quicker to 2007. Perilou steps up, pass complete. That is Jared Mitchell, and Mitchell has the first down at the 46-yard line of the Blue Raiders. Jared. A gain of eight on the play. And Perilou showing a lot of poise. Perilou running, kill you with his feet. Great mobility. Shows a little touch arm strength to Demetrius Bird. And here he throws a little screen pass, a little touch pass to Charles Scott for the score, his second. And this is another one airing it out to Demetrius Bird, his second touchdown toss of the campaign, of the season, of the uh, game, I'm sorry. And Perilou flushed out, but on the run, completes the pass down to the 36-yard line. As making the grab down there, Charles Scott, the sophomore fullback, or running back, I should say. And now with a minute 23 to go, LSU trying to hustle things up here. You see Perilou's numbers, and certainly very impressive here tonight. You know, he impressed me, Ryan Perilou, with the ability to improvise just now. And a little soft touch to a safety valve, Charles Scott. Good soft hands. Nice pickup. Almost the first down. Middle Tennessee blitzing on the play. Perilou has time. Short little pass. Scott again. And that one will be good for another first down. Inside a minute to go here in Baton Rouge. And the Tigers already leading 20-0, trying to put some more on the board here before the half. Mike linebacker Lonnie Clemens for the Blue Raiders. Nice pickup on that. Nice tackle. Thought that uh, Scott had gotten enough for the first down, but now they're saying he's a yard short, so it will be third and one from the 36. You know, there's a lot of tailgating going on, and 
You know, I did a little research this past week, and it seems like tailgating has been taking place in and around Tiger Stadium since the 30s. Uh, did it originate here? I don't know. But, you know, it's been going on for a long, long time. Not to the extent it is right now, but it's, uh, it's been a tradition here that uh, this is the place to party before a game. And didn't you tell me that there's a great story about people riding the train up from New Orleans for the games? That's, that's part of the tradition here in uh, Tiger lore. Whistles on the play, and penalty flags are flying. Well, tell me, Renee, so far tonight, is this what you expected? Well, you know, I, I, I'm looking for some young guys to step up. Part of the snap, false start, 79 offense, five-yard penalty, still third down. Please reset the game clock to 54 seconds. You know, a lot of young guys had to step up. Jared Mitchell, Demetrius Bird, um, Ryan Perilou in that group, and a lot of guys have stepped up and and uh, gained some a lot of experience here in the first half, and guys that LSU will have to count on as the season goes on. Perilou on third, and they'll make it six, and a big play here. That is LaFell, and LaFell has the first down and more. Nice grab and run by Brandon LaFell. Gain of 20 on the play. I still think back on his first career catch. It was a touchdown for 58 yards right here in Tiger Stadium last year. Little middle screen here from Brandon LaFell, and he takes off. He gets the Jets, and he knows now he's worked very, very hard for where he is, and uh, he knows that his... His contributions will be valuable to this team now. And Scott, the ball carrier, has inside 40 seconds to go. Illegal formation on the offense. Six men on the line of scrimmage. Five-yard penalty. Repeat second half. All right, so they'll push that one back. Five yards and a couple of penalties here, two out of the last three plays. LSU, over 100 yards, of course, rushing here tonight. You know what that means? They're 22-0 and 0 when going 100-plus. Take a look at the average yards per play tonight. How about LSU? Almost eight per tote. Carolou dumps it off to the left side. Down to the 10, the 5, and into, well, about the three-yard line. Nice catch and run by Jared Mitchell. Little quick hitter to Jared Mitchell, and boy, he's got the Jets. He really knows how to turn it up. And there's another young guy that LSU is going to need to count on in the wide receiver position. Early do set Brandon LaFell or a pair of them. Haven't seen Brandon, haven't seen uh, early do set do anything tonight, but Jared Mitchell, Demetrius Bird have really stepped up huge tonight. Mitchell, four catches, 49 yards, as Perilou kills the clock with 22 seconds remaining here in the first half. And of course, it will now be second and goal to go from the four. You know, he's, Jared Mitchell is, is really good run after the catch. He was a former quarterback at Westgate High School in New Iberia and got a great explosion. He is a very good baseball player, but, uh, you know, he's a great athlete. And that's the kind of guys, you know, early you set was a converted quarterback. Jared Mitchell was a converted quarterback. A lot of these guys are, are just outstanding players. Trent, Trenton Holiday was a very, very good running back, believe it or not, in uh, Zachary, Louisiana. They all become good wide receivers, explosive kind of guys, fit the... Uh, wide receiver tradition here at LSU. And penalty flags once again. Perilou escapes the grasp of one red or a blue Raider defender, I should say. And uh, we'll have to wait and see once again. This has been a much penalized drive. This is a little sloppy unless Miles will have to address it as we have 14 ticks to go before the halftime break. Josh McManus out of Brother Martin High School in New Orleans enters the game. Illegal shift on the offense, number 87. Two players set, shifting, never getting set. Five-yard penalty, still second out. Well, you know, Renee, we've seen some things here tonight that we have not seen from LSU this season. Well, again, you got some young guys. Brandon LaFell and, uh, is the only experienced receiver in there. Early Doucette is not in there. You got Jared Mitchell and Tolliver and Demetrius Bird. Uh, you're bringing a lot of guys in and out. Ryan Perlew again is a, a quarterback. Not that he's responsible for a wide receiver in motion, but you got a lot of new guys that are not in sync yet, and it takes a little time. All right, Perlew back and under pressure, and he is escaping the grasp of the defenders. I don't know how in the world he did that, but he certainly did, and the pass goes incomplete. You've got to see this one again. Boy, he took a shot, and 
and used all his strengths and abilities as he was hit by a number. A good shot right there by um, Derek Mason. Mason. Just couldn't get him down. He's joined by Eric Walden. They just couldn't bring him down before he released the ball incomplete. Three ticks to go now, and what will the Tigers do? Have to, you have to think they're going to go for a field goal. And they do. Colt Davis is down on the field, and Tigers, of course, would love to have gotten the six, but they'll go for three more here and try to head into halftime with a 23-nothing lead. David, of course, a perfect two for two on the night. Hasn't missed on the season. This one is from 27 yards, just a chip shot, and that one with more authority than the last, which uh, just barely made it, but that one was right down the pike, and Colt David gets his third field goal of the night, and leading 23-0, the Tigers are at the half. Well, the Tigers have pretty much dominated this one from start to finish. Charles Scott, Glenn Dorsey, and company putting the points on the board and keeping Middle Tennessee off of it. Back with more after we take a network break. Uh, all fans can log on to lsusports.net and register to win two tickets, two sideline passes, a Taco Bell prize pack, and of course the opportunity to march to Death Valley with the Golden Band. Just look for the Tiger Bell March to Death Valley link and complete the registration form at lsusports.net. All right, Greg Hamer of Taco Bell, thank you so much for joining us at halftime and, of course, your involvement and support with LSU thank Athletics. You, thank you so much. And without any further ado, let's go downstairs. The Golden Band from Tigerland. and 
climax this special weekend with their performance in Tiger Stadium. This is the 21st anniversary of the alumni band, and its members span the years from 1936 to 2006, and have come from as far away as California to join us this evening. They are led by drum majors Randy Smith, Tom Fronick, Wade Sutherland, Presley Smith, and Mindy Aguilar, along with drum major Edwin Delray Dunkey. It is with great pride that we present to you the 2007 edition of the Alumni Band from Tigerland. Always a big day on game day when ESPN's game day makes a trip to Baton Rouge as they did last week against Virginia Tech. Let's go behind the scenes and take a look. More national exposure for the Fighting Tiger football program as ESPN brought its game day television production to Baton Rouge this week. And the Tiger Nation was ready when game day hit the air early Saturday morning. 
Here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Les Elef Bon Time Roulet, the home opener, a mere 11 hours and 22 minutes away. So obviously preparations have been underway for days. Let the good times start rolling on a season of great expectations at LSU. But a big challenge in the opener is in come the inspired Pokies of Virginia Tech, ranked number nine. As expected, both Chris Fowler and Kirk Herbstreet said Baton Rouge and Tiger Stadium are one of their all-time favorite college football venues. What I love are the night games, like everybody else. We love to, as much as we can during the day, we will finish game day, and then we'll try to get incognito and sneak around and check out the tailgating scene and, and eat some food and enjoy the hospitality because it, there's no place in the country where you can build up to a game the same way we do LSU. We love the cuisine. Uh, we love the passion. And I think this year, because there's so much excitement about the, the Tigers' chances, I mean, it's not just a social gathering. It's a social gathering with a big meaning at the end, and it's part of a, a bigger mission for the season. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we're thrilled to be back here. I wouldn't be surprised if it was the, the first of several visits to Baton Rouge this year. Well, it's one of my favorite places to watch a game. I, I love the SEC because of the passion of the fans. Um, but to come in at, at night to Tiger Stadium, it's just unique. The history is there. The traditions are there. The fans love their team. Uh, they never give up on them. They're proactive. What I consider proactive is even if things start to go bad, they try to help them and pick them back up. There are a lot of stadiums that, that wait till something good happens. LSU fans will their team to a, to a victory. Um, so it's just it's just a lot of noise for three and a half straight hours, and it's never, if their defense is on the field, it never stops. It's, it's one of my favorite places. Well, I did the LSU-Mississippi State game up close in Starkville, and I was, you know, you, the first thing is you're just blown away by the, the quality and the depth of the athletes. It's just it, it, incredible how well um, Les and his staff have recruited, building on what Saban did here, the athletes who stockpile. When a guy goes down, here comes another guy you haven't heard of who's got great ability as well. and. And you know that's that's the dream scenario. That's what every program hopes to have. So obviously the foundation is rock solid. Recruiting has has been uh, has been fantastic, and and it's it's very it's a very attractive place to recruit too. I mean, there's a lot to lot to like about playing here. And don't be surprised if this is not the last visit game day makes to Baton Rouge this season. Kevin Wagner inside LSU football. It is the halftime report presented by Ultraman Audio, and we'll be back with more Tiger Vision after this local break. How long has you been up there? I don't know. I think a while. It's halftime, 23-0 LSU leading Middle Tennessee. And this halftime report is presented by Ultraman Audio. Some first half highlights, Renee. LSU got on the board quick. Ryan Perlow shows why he needs to be respected with his feet. He can kill you with his feet on the ground. Did a good job of improvising. Then Jacob Hester around the right side, part of the 108 yards rushing LSU had in the first half. Jake and uh, Ryan Pell, who comes right back, or rather, Cole David with his first of three field goals, puts the Tigers on the scoreboard. Ryan Perlou run again with his arm, airs it out. He is 14 out of 19, thus four for 100 and uh, just make that 216 yards. His first touchdown toss is fourth of the season to Charles Scott in a little touch screen pass. And then he comes to the same play right here. Good blocking for Charles Scott as he breaks the end zone and gets in for the score. Uh, Ryan Perlou airs it out long distance for Demetrius Bird, his second touchdown toss of this game, his fifth of the season. And a good play right here. As you can see, Demetrius Bird on a go just beats the defensive back. Bad play on his bad angle on a defensive back. And Demetrius Bird gets into the end zone for a score. Tigers up 23 to nothing. And the numbers have been uh, slanted very decisively toward LSU. We'll take a look at those in just a moment. But really, with the exception of the opening series for Middle Tennessee, LSU's defense has just shut down Joe Craddock and company. Underway second half, that is G takes it at the two yard line, trying to cut back to the near side and nowhere to go. LSU special teams continue to play well here tonight. 
Here's a look at the first half stats. And as we say, <laughs> rushing yards, that seems to fit the bill as LSU was holding opponents to just a yard and a half per carry. And Middle Tennessee hasn't even fared that well, Renee. Time of possession is very deceiving because LSU has had a quick strike offense. But uh, the uh, total yards, 324 to 26. Those two penalties on the right side, or five penalties, two turnovers, is something that Les Miles is very disturbed about. And you're going to bet that he addressed that at halftime. And even despite those two turnovers, LSU with a 23-0 lead here as we begin the second half. And the Tigers showing blitz. Stelts up the middle and makes contact. Tries to get to the quarterback. Nearly picked off G. Almost gets it on the carom, but nice defensive play down there by Chevis Jackson, who got his hands on it. He had a safety blitz. Stelz, he gets picked up well, and Craddock has time to air it out. Just a little underthrown, and he's lucky this pass was not intercepted. Almost got it on the second ricochet right here as he just stays with it. And almost came up with the catch on the second bounce. Incomplete. Injured Tiger down. And a good look at... Chevis Jackson, the senior out of Mobile, Alabama, making his 28th consecutive start, a first-team All-SEC selection by the coaches. And that's Greg Stelts right now. That's not a good sign. Well, Stelts took quite a shot, and it seemed to be pretty low. Uh, and, of course, remember, he came into this game, uh, nicked up a little bit with a toe injury. But uh, maybe we can take another look at the play there because Stelts definitely was picked up on that blitz and took quite a shot. Well, he, he blitzed, and he's one of the best at that. He's done it for a long time here, and um, we're not sure if it's a leg or something else. Seems to be moving pretty well. It's just... Uh, Stelts, uh, national leader in interceptions with four on the year, also has a sack. Nine career interceptions for Stelts. He's certainly had a brilliant career here at LSU. He's going to be okay. I think the fact that... Uh, they didn't really bring anybody out except the trainers out there in the field. I think he just took a shot and just uh, seems to be walking and seems to be fine. He's, he did have a toe injury coming into this game, and that may have been aggravated. Uh, you never know with the shot. He seems to be moving. Everything's fine. And we'll be back in again. He's tough arm break. You know, he, his, uh, <laughs> his, his goal is to be... I hope that's the extent of your span. <laughs> his, his goal is to be an ultimate fighter. Can't believe it. That's how tough. He is one tough guy. Second and 10 from their own 12. And that is McNair as Middle Tennessee unsuccessful as they have been throughout the night. Ali Highsmith exits and Chad Jones comes in. That's goes to show how much they think of that young freshman. On a sudden lap, Chad Jones. Well, he is so highly regarded by the Tiger coaching staff. He's going to be a very, very special player. Middle Tennessee needs to get out to their own 23-yard line to get the first down. And the Tigers showing blitz again. And look who's back in is Stelts. You were right about that tough ombre. And they'll spot that one at the 21. A pickup of eight on the play. A nice grab by Bobby Williams there. Or Patrick Honeycutt, rather. As they still will be about two yards shy of the first down. Credit Craddock with that uh, nice pickup on the blitz. And an opening for Honeycutt. Hit his mark. Not enough for a first down, but uh, Braddock made most out of an opportunity. Good look at Jared Mitchell, the sophomore out of Westgate High School in New Iberia. Led the baseball team in steals. First time a freshman had done that in nearly a decade. Nice big punt by DeFata. And Mitchell trying to cut back to the inside. And he is swarmed over and brought down. And they'll spot that one right about the 30-yard line of LSU. Kevin Brown in to make the special teams play. And they credit uh, the Blue Raiders with nice special teams. They kept them bottled up. Didn't have him any opportunity to hit the outside. We look at Ryan Perlou there. And I feel like his, his opening half was pretty good. I would say. 14 out of 19, 216 yards. Did a good job with his feet as well. Rushed for uh, 14 yards. Only that blemish rushed. was that interception that didn't amount to much for Middle Tennessee. First and 10. They spotted at their own 34. And Hester gets the ball carry. 
And he picks up uh, perhaps about three on the play. Kind of interesting story about Jacob Pester. You know, he's a big fan of Elvis and Dean Martin, and he listens to Elvis tapes, kind of psych himself up for Tiger Games. How many young guys are Elvis and Dean Martin fans? He's one of them. Of Evangel High School. The bevy of information we have. That's it? right. You know, he's Walmart got the 5A player of the year as well. <laughs> yeah. Excellent player. Got married over the summer as well. Did you mention that? Congratulations to he and the lovely Mrs. Katie. And a, and a great special teams player for the LSU special great teams. Great all-around player. Hester, one of the top receiving running backs in LSU history as well, makes the grab there. And that one is perilously, not perilou, but perilously close. First down. To, it is a first down for LSU. That's his 51st grab. And, uh, you know, he's another guy that can be playing on Sundays. Good receiver, good special teams player, and, and he leads the Tigers in rushing. Coming into this game, he had 149 yards and just under six yards per try. And leading him tonight as well, seven carries for 44 yards. First and ten. And Hester getting plenty of activity here on this series. Hadn't heard from him in quite some time. Really trying to make a run at it this year, and this looks like the year that they could do that. Paralou flips the pass, and it is complete to Jared Mitchell. And Mitchell back to about the original line of scrimmage. So gets the catch, but doesn't really get any yards. And that'll bring up third and nine. The thing about Middle Tennessee State, their defense, such great team speed. Should be the number one defense in the Sun Belt. They do a lot of zone blitzing. They get a run to the ball very well. Uh, you know, one thing, they gave up 596 yards, seven touchdowns in the last two games passing. Their linebacking core is, they don't have any stud linebacker, but the thing that impresses me, Lonnie Clements has done a good job. Hickman has done a good job. So if they, if they played uh, respectful. Uh, respectfully at uh, linebacker tonight against the Tigers. LSU 5 of 7 on third down conversions. Paralu has to dart out under pressure. He can make a run for it and get the first and he does. Great leaping effort as he goes inside the 45 down to about the 43 yard line. And Renee, you talked about that athleticism for Paralu and that's uh, the case for both LSU quarterbacks, Flynn and Paralu, both very, very athletic. He's the quickest of the Tiger signal callers and he tucks it in good, makes the decision very well. It's a good move right here on the Damon Nixon and that's not a He's not a shoddy tackler. Nixon is one of the best defensive backs in the Sun Belt and goes, gets airborne for the first down. So the march continues for LSU, leading 23-0 here. Ten and a half to go. Third quarter. Hester straight ahead running and picks up about eight. And we hadn't heard from Hester for quite some time. And uh, he's gotten plenty of activity here on this series. You've seen Scott, Keelan Williams, Jacob Pastor talked about running by committee. You know, LSU is successful. Their total back backfield averages six and a half yards per carry collectively. So they are, they're, whatever they're doing is working. Two yards to go on second down. And Middle Tennessee showing blitz. Hester has the first down and cranks his way down to about the 29-yard line of Middle Tennessee. You know, we talked a little while ago about Darren McFadden with the Heisman Trophy against Ole, against Alabama. If he asked number 18 right there, who would he vote for the Heisman Trophy? He'd have to tell you John David Booty. He speaks to John David about once or twice a week. They were high school teammates at Evangel High School in Shreveport, Louisiana. And very, very close friends, and John David Booty's going to be. It'd be interesting if somehow, if uh, everything falls the way people anticipate, that the Tigers and the Trojans end up playing sometime down the road. Two good friends would square off. That would be uh, very interesting. Blue Raiders blitzing once again. And on the keeper, Paralu has another first down, and he's knocked out of bounds at about the 13-yard line. And Paralu, with a pickup of 12, has done the job in the air and on the ground here tonight. And he does a good read. He could pitch it. He's got an option to pitch. He decides to keep it. Doesn't pitch to the running back, Hester. He keeps it himself. And uh, good decision here. Picks up the first down. Boy, he's got some quickness. He becomes a running back and uses his instincts. And again, he's a 6'3", 227-pounder. He's, a, he's quite a weapon once he gets into the second level. Eight carries, 37 yards for Perilou tonight. And 
How about this? A little trickery on the reverse. LaFell needs a block. He gets it, and he's in for another score. 18 yards, Brandon LaFell on the reverse, and the Tigers make it 29 0. That was well executed, and Damon Nixon, number five, the safety for Middle Tennessee, did all he could to take on the blockers and try to hold up until the Calvary arrived. Just didn't do it. Give it to Hester. Hester flips it back to Brandon LaFell. There's two blockers in front. One of them is uh, Siron Black and Ryan Perlou, and just enough to get Brandon LaFell into the end zone for his first rushing touchdown. And Colt David knocks that one through. 30 nothing LSU here with 907 to go in the third quarter and high fives all around for LaFell and company as the Tigers just continue to march and we'll be back to Tiger Stadium after we take this network break LSU in command 70s it was Steve Rogers Brad Davis Terry Rubisky in the 80s, it was Gary James, Dalton Hilliard, Gene Lang in the 90s, Kevin Folk, uh, Kendall Cleveland, uh, Rondell Mealy, 2000, Joseph Adai, Ali Broussard, Sharon Carey, and now you have these guys. So they've been doing it for a long time with three or four good running backs, spreading the ball around, getting everybody a little taste. And uh, love to go back and do the math on how many of those guys are Louisiana <laughs> products because it's a high, high, high percentage. Also, most of those play in the NFL. Well, once, these days. Once he gets that team, once Coach uh, Saban gets that team playing, uh, it, he's going to be a threat, and it's going to be interesting when LSU travels up to Tuscaloosa in November to play. Craddock from the gun. Tigers blitzing on the play. And again, shutting down the run. Looks like the ball may be loose on the field, and we'll see LSU players. And the officials also are confirming that at the bottom of the pile, number 44, Danny McRae comes up with a fumble. Must have squirted loose down there in the midst of uh, boy, a whole pack of players, but McRae comes up with a fumble recovery. You yeah, watch number 84, Raheem Alem. You can see right here, look, bang! He just crashes in from his outside right defensive end, springs the ball loose. Somebody's going to come up with it. Danny McRae comes up with it. Al Woods has a shot at it. But Ra Raheem Alem, a sophomore out of St. Augustine High School in New Orleans, great play. Danny McRae, another big play. Had a sack earlier in the first half and now comes up with a fumble recovery as an injured Blue Raider down. And Tanner, the ball carrier on that one, has uh, met with plenty of resistance. You saw that statistic in rushing yards in the first half, minus 19 for Middle Tennessee. And that looks like it might be Tanner down on the field, and indeed it is as they help him back up. And he looks like he is uh, uh, a bit gimpy there but seemingly uh, able to walk off on under his own power. So that's a good sign. He's going to be a special player for the Blue Raiders. Good look at Coach Stockstill right there. He's a little beside himself right now. He's trying to do everything he can, and now he finds he hands the ball over to the opponents at the 15-yard line, trailing by 30. And uh, assuredly, unless something goes sour here, the uh, Tigers should come up with points. Tanner was averaging uh, over 12 yards per carry coming into this game thanks to a huge performance against Louisville in that shootout a week ago. Paralu on first down looks into the end zone and found his receiver in the back of it. Touchdown. Tigers put another one on the board as coming down with the catch is Terrence Tolliver, the freshman out of Hempstead High School in Texas. Terrence Tolliver runs a post pattern. Safety doesn't get back. He beats coverage. His second touchdown catch of the season. And the young freshman is so excited. Ryan Paralu, great protection in the pocket. Safety doesn't get there in time. Beats the cornerback. And touchdown, Tigers. Boy, I want to say that's the same high school that Joseph Adai is out of as Colt David puts that one right up through on the PAT and makes it a 37 to nothing game. Well, I'll tell you who did go, Hempstead, Texas. I'll tell you when we come back. All right. Well, the Tigers in total command, 37 nothing, and we'll be back with more Tiger Vision after this network break. Terrence Tolliver, the freshman out of Hempstead, Texas, gets his second touchdown of the season and his career and take a look at this one it's a beauty the two-time long jump state champion out of Hempstead Texas same school that produced Harvey Williams catches his second touchdown catch of the season from Ryan Perilu his sixth 
touchdown pass of 2007. And you'll see that team, those guys team up for a few more before it's all over. Uh, one play, 15 yards, seven ticks off the clock. Paralu to Terrace Tolliver. 15 yards, extra point was good, 37 zip, Tigers up. Desmond G and Alex Suber, the starting right cornerback deep to return the kickoff for Middle Tennessee. As Crutchfield takes care of the honors here, and boy, that's a massive boot from the freshman as he knocks that one into the end zone. I think you'll begin to see a couple of new guys in there. Jai Eugene, number four, cornerback. Uh, you may see uh, Harry Coleman in that safety. You may see Chad Jones. Uh, you know, go trickle in some new guys. Jacob Cotrera, linebacker. So slowly you'll see some fresh Tigers take the field on defense. And a good opportunity, as you say, for uh, some of those players to get some some reps. Craddock completes the pass to the near sideline. As hauling that one in is Michael Craddock's Cannon, is junior out of Whitehaven High School up in Memphis, Tennessee. Kids got some great speed. Clocked at 4-4 in the 40-yard dash. It's his fourth catch of this 2007 season. And Cannon was a special guy when he arrived. He had a chance to go to either Vanderbilt, Mississippi State, Memphis, or Texas Tech. Came over to Little Tennessee, and we're glad to have him. After a pickup of five, it's second and five. And a quick pitch. And... Avoiding one tackle and making his way up for about a gain of four on the play was McNair. Chevis Jackson kind of misdirected that play. He came blitzing in from his quarterback position. Didn't break down, so he was flying through the field, uh, flying to the ball and uh, run a cut back on him. He didn't uh, tackle him, but he misdirected that play, made him cut him back to the middle where his teammates made the stop for a short game, third and two. Blue Raiders need to get out past their own 30-yard line. LSU showing blitz, and they do. They send the house, and it's successful as Stelz gets back there for another sack. Stelz came into this game with an injured toe, got shaken up a bit ago, and notches his third sack of the season. What a good athlete he is. Craig Stelz comes again through the A-gap. Boy, I tell you what, he blows this play up. DeMarco McNair had nowhere to go. The senior from Romo High School in Metairie, Louisiana. A sure tackler. Leads the nation in interceptions with four. And he is a player from whistle to whistle. And Afata back to punt. Stands at his own 11-yard line. Already six punts here tonight for an average of 37 yards per. And this one's a high and a hanger, and it will not get a return. And it gets a pretty nice roll. And down to about the 32-yard line of LSU. It tight roped that sideline and picked up another 7, 8, 10 yards. On the a 44-yard punt. Of course, no return on that one. So we've got a timeout on the field. LSU leading Middle Tennessee 37-0. Back to Tiger Stadium in just a moment. First, we'll take this network break. Tune in this Sunday on the LSU Sports Radio Network from 6 to 7 p.m. or attend the show each week at the Hilton Baton Rouge Capital Center. Give is to Williams and a penalty flag on the play. Kevin Williams carried the ball on the left side. Tackled by 26. Roy Polite in on the tackle there as we will await to see I think perhaps a holding penalty on those Tigers. New center in air, Ryan Miller. Spells Brett Helm for a while. Holding, 45 offense. 10-yard penalty for the previous spot. Repeat first down. Quinn Johnson, the fullback, getting caught with his hand in the penalty jar, you might say. You know, we talked about Ryan Miller, new center in air. He's a big guy out of Barb High School played high school football with Justin Vincent. He's also a big fan of the Beatles. How many young guys can say they follow the Beatles? But boy, get get Ryan he Miller. and Hester together. Six penalty of the night for 28 penalties on the night. Hatch is back in at quarterback. Recall, you may that he played in on one play earlier in the game. And Hatch, the transfer from Harvard, tucks it in and picks up about a handful. And that's what he's good at. He can, he's got some pretty good feet. He can air it out. I wouldn't be surprised with uh, 5.35 to go in the third stanza that you may see him 
test the air a little bit. And, uh, Hatch is back in. Sean Jordan, good fullback. Hatch, 6'3", oh. and 210-pounder, sophomore. As we said, from Henderson, Nevada, just outside of Las Vegas. He's made great strides, Doug. He, coaches feel like he's absorbed everything. He's got a good football IQ and, and really uh, got the confidence of Gary Croton and Coach Miles. And uh, looks like first option with him is usually just tuck it in and start running. Well, you know, when you're not used to throwing, well, they're going to kind of spoon feed you a little prior bit. Prior to the snap, false start, 71 offense, five yard penalty, still second down. Carnell Stewart, a senior and one of two first year starters on that offensive line, both he and Lyle hit, getting their first starts this season. And there's a good look at Stewart. Just uh, who's a cousin of oh. Cordell Stewart. First cousin of Cordell Stewart. He played at John Curtis. Cordell, a uh, former Errant. But Cor Cor uh, Cornell Stewart is the first cousin. He played a little defense, as we said, and he switched over. And he's done a good job on the offensive side. Only 320 pounds. Not quite uh, Herman Johnson size. Nice pass dumped off over the middle. And still on the go, tripped up and flipping over Williams as he gets back up to about the 37-yard line. And Alex Super takes him down, but a little middle screen here to a screen pass to Keelan Williams and uses his instincts. Explosion is 4-3-5 speed, and he gets on the outside here, and he's gone for a good distance, but Super brings him down. And uh, nice tackle. And of course, Paralu back in at quarterback. Keely Williams is explosive. You know, he's he's worked so hard. It came down to USC, Ole Miss, or LSU before he made his decision with the Tigers. And boy, he is a total package, and he's a good one. Good size kid as well, 226 pounder. Nice pass complete. That is LaFell again, and has the first down as the Tigers cross midfield yet again. You know, Brandon LaFell. Great athlete, talked about, you know, and I say basketball skills because basketball skills are very similar to uh, the uh, skills that a defensive back or wide receiver move uh, uses. And Brandon LaFell, we said, had a chance to go to Texas A&M, play basketball or, or um, football or basketball. And let's listen in, Les Miles, talking about this receiver core that goes very, very deep for LSU. Ryan's... Um, um, you know, to me, shows mobility and the ability to throw, and and uh, you know, I think he's coming of age, uh, and I, but I think that's a work in progress. And an injured Tiger down on the field. It's the biggest guy of them all, Herman Johnson, a six-seven, three hundred and fifty-six yard starting left guard for LSU, and. Good to see him coming off the field under his own power. We talked about Brandon LaFell before the break, and he wears number one. Why? He admired Warren Moon. Kind of interesting there. For a receiver to admire a quarterback. Exactly right. I think he, you have to admire him because they, they're the ones that deliver the ball to you. Inside four minutes to go, third quarter. LSU with a commanding lead. And three receivers bunched up to the right. The give once again is to Williams on the quick pitch. And he picks up about a yard, perhaps two. LSU, right last time they ran that bunch formation, they had to reverse to Brandon LaFell for the 15-yard scamper for a touchdown. And uh, the Blue Raiders were ready for that when they, and they came up and spelled it out and stopped it for a couple of yard gain. You've got to be happy with Ryan Perlew's progress throughout this game. He's managed the ball very well, handled himself. Don't know how many checkoffs he's had, but I have to think that Coach Miles He's, he's gained a lot of confidence with his teammates and the coaches. Well, it's a great opportunity for Harlow to get a lot of game experience here tonight. Of course, uh, if you did not catch it at the beginning of the broadcast, Matt Flynn out tonight. Uh, we didn't know until game time if he would play or if he would not, and Harlow got his first career start. Of course, Flynn with a gimpy ankle and uh, wise for the Tigers to give him a rest and uh, let him rest up because uh, there's plenty of football ahead as uh, his has been diagnosed, I guess, as a high ankle sprain. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then this might be a good opportunity to take a look at Ryan Perlou. Not as much pressure if you might have been facing a Florida or one of those teams, and uh, certainly a good defense, but this has worked out well so far for Perlou. Tigers need to get out to the 38, and they do. The catch is Jared Mitchell. Mitchell to the 30, still on his feet. 
Down the left sideline, tripped up and down at the, what they're saying, he stepped out of bounds at the about 11 yard line. Great athleticism from Mitchell who nearly turned that one into another touchdown. And the former 10th round draft choice of the Minnesota Twins shows why he chose football. Good catch right here, yards after catch. Excellent. Look at this one break tackle, another broken tackle right here, a third almost stepped out of bounds. Boy, he stretched for that end zone, but he'd already stepped out of bounds. Great play by Jared Mitchell. Just a nice throw and catch. You can see he had great athleticism and individual effort here. He tried so hard, stepped out of bounds inside the 15, about the 11 yard line. That one a gain of 32. Mitchell, six catches, 82 yards here tonight. Pretty good for a guy who came into this game with just one reception for 16 yards on the season. And back to the ground game for the Tigers. Murphy the ball carrier. So the Tigers once again just continuing to go deep down the depth chart with a multitude of running backs who are highly capable. And, and we talked about running by committee. If this went back to the uh, you know 90s with Kevin Folk and uh, Rondell Mealy. Uh, Richard Murphy would be the Rondell Mealy of this group. He, he runs his style. is very similar. Got good body lean, outstanding speed and instincts. Has another gear. Uh, and he's, he's a lot of things are going to, good things are going to come for number 26, Richard Murphy. Eight carries, 37 yards coming into the game. And another Tiger touchdown. Eight yards on the touchdown run as the Tigers make it 43 to nothing. Murphy gets his first touchdown of this season. The redshirt freshman out of Rayville High School gets in for six more. His feet are not touching the ground right now. Yeah. This is his first touchdown in the purple and gold. This young man has worked so hard to be where he is. I tell you what, I'm so happy for him and his, his uh, family and friends back home are excited for him as well. And Colt David puts the exclamation mark on the touchdown. Richard Murphy, an eight-yard touchdown run as the redshirt freshman gets his first of his career. Extra, you know, give credit to the Hogs up front. Great blocking right there. Good pull by, uh, that was a great block on the corner by Joseph Barksdale. Ryan Miller turns this guy in. Good kick out by Lau Hit. But good blocking, individual effort. And boy, he just, he was not going to be denied. Richard Murphy. Again, following his instincts, good seal block, and boy, they just opened a hole for him, and he is one excited Tiger. Look at Saran Black here, watch the block he makes, bang. Well done there as well, great blocking up front by the Tigers. Lau hit, had another good block, and Joseph Barksdale, young freshman, was in there as well, so good blocking by the Tigers, and Ryan Miller, a safety, I mean a center, I'm sorry, had a good shot on the safety and wiped him out. So Murphy all smiles, and the Tigers uh, really and truly here tonight, Renee, with the exception of the first drive of the game for Middle Tennessee. The defense has just totally shut the Blue Raiders down, and this LSU offense, despite a couple of turnovers, has overcome those and just continue to put points on the board and just march the ball down the field. You know, and they quick, and they, they can score just a, a little over a minute, which they have done. And, uh, you know, LSU is just they're hitting on all cylinders, right, offensively and defensively. Crutchfield kicks off for LSU. G on the return, and G is swarmed over at about the 23-yard line. In to make the tackle, Perry Riley, sophomore out of Ellenwood, Georgia. Good look at him. I made reference to the first drive of the game for Middle Tennessee. It was a 10-play drive. Since that time, Renee, Middle Tennessee, in eight other drives, has not gotten a first down since. Ouch. That defense has been impressive. A Le LSU. A Lem a Lem and a Livingston are in at defensive ends for the Tigers now. As you said, good opportunity for a lot of Tigers to take advantage of this opportunity to get some playing time. Good quarterback in for Middle Tennessee. And that is Dwight Dasher, a true freshman out of 
Charlton County High School in Folkston, Georgia. Have you been to Folkston, Georgia? No, I haven't, but it sounds like a very friendly place. Good folks there. Yeah, I would think so. He's got 15 yards rushing coming into this game. He's, you know, he's a young stud. He had 7,655 yards and 87 touchdowns in his career. He had 31 touchdowns rushing, but uh, he had 30, 375 yards in one game passing. So he's the future of the Blue Blue Raiders. And probably an offside penalty on LSU as it looked like a limb jumped offside there on the right side. And there is indeed a flag down on the field and I've got to think that's what it is. Well it looks like the night is over for Craddock who was 6 of 11 tonight for just 59 yards for Middle Tennessee. Offside 84. Anxious to make their mark Try to make something happen. Great opportunity for him to get some additional, although this is a young man who has seen some action for LSU. He has, and he's got a bright future. He's the older brother of Chad Jones, Raheem Malem is, and out of St. Augustine High School. He is that speed rusher on the edge that uh, gives a little different look from the defense. Ranked as the number two prospect in all of Louisiana, coming out of, as you say, St. Aug. Well, a timeout on the field. And we'll take a break as well. You might say the Tigers are marching their way to victory here tonight. The receivers doing their job and the Tigers getting it done on the field. Ryan Paralu leading the charge. And we'll be back with more Tiger Vision after this network break. Had a great crowd on hand here tonight. Early on, lots of folks heading back out to partake in more tailgating. I invite you to watch number 72 uh, in this play. We'll talk about it as soon as this play is over, but it's he's got an interesting story about probably the only center in the country that does what he does, and I'll tell you about it. Mark Thompson you're making reference to from yes. Middle Tennessee. Interesting. Actually, I'll tell you quick while we have a chance. He From the shotgun formation, he snaps with his left hand. When the quarterback is under center, he snaps with his right hand. Can you explain Andy that? Very talented young man. That's, that's very unusual. I don't think you'll find another center watch. He'll go to the left hand from the shotgun when the quarterback is under center. Great camera work. Great shot of Mark Thompson. There it is. The left-handed snap from the shotgun. And nowhere to go. On second and one. Boy, big Marlin favorite down in there. And Sanders as well in to make the tackle on the play. Ball in favor. His dad played at uh, Langston College with Hollywood Henderson. He was a teammate of Hollywood Henderson. His uncle Robert Barber played at Grambling. Went on to play in the uh, pros with Pittsburgh Steelers and the Green Bay Packers. But uh, boy, he comes from a uh, great family. His mom, Mary. He's a good player. Defensive tackle. He's just a junior out of West Jefferson High School. Third and one now. And Dasher in it. Quarterback finds a seam and makes his way up the middle to the 46-yard line. Picks up a first down. And that is the first first down by Middle Tennessee. And gosh, how long? And Dasher just reads this. A block, well-blocked play. And Harry Coleman takes a shot at him with an arm tackle. Number 24 doesn't bring him down. Gets to the second level quickly. And Dasher uh, makes a splash in that defense, picks up a first down, and, and has the change moving. First first down since their opening drive of the game. Uh huh. That's, that's interesting. And it's a change of pace. It's a little different from Craddock. Craddock did what he could. Dasher is a little different style. Kind of an on Dasher. On Dasher. Type of thing. On, yeah. I figured you'd go there. Dasher going deep. Has a receiver, but the pass. Uh, and it looks like we're going to have interference, but I do not think that was a catchable ball. The intended receiver, Bobby Williams, the junior out of Jacksonville, Florida. And coverage down there for LSU was Jai Eugene, but I do not think that was a catchable ball. Well, you know, he's got great contact with the receiver. Pass interference, defense number four, 15-yard penalty on that first half. And you see that uh, Dasher just throws it up there and hopes for the best. And 
you know, the thing is, Ja Eugene impeded his, his progress that did not allow him to come back for the ball. That's why the penalty is thrown. He impeded his ability to come back. You know, any but good coach will tell you that, um, you know, the, the, the best part of a defensive back, the, the best skill of a defensive back is finding the ball in flight. And I don't care if you're a 4-3 guy or can jump over the moon, you have to find the ball in flight and know where you are, know where your receiver is. And, and Jai Eugene just kind of lost the ball, lost where he was at that time. All right, so a first down by penalty. Two first downs on this drive from Middle Tennessee. Dasher's pass complete to the near side. Won't go for much. Maybe a gain of one as Bobby Williams hauls that one in. Bobby Williams pulls it in the flat as Dasher sprints right. And hits his receiver, his second catch by Bobby Williams. Williams uh, leading the Blue Raiders in receptions last year, had 36 of them. And there's the stat to back it up, Middle Tennessee. Just two second half first downs. They both come on this drive. One they earned, and well, they both they earned. The second was by penalty. That's Bobby Williams again. He's capable of a bust out game. He had seven catches against Maryland last year, so he can light it up. And Dasher stays on his feet. Boy, some shifty running as he makes his way down to the 25-yard line of LSU. And call that one a gain of 12. He's more of a running back than a quarterback right now. And he gives LSU just a little different look. He's got that explosiveness about him. 5'10", 198, young, strong arm. But uh, I'll tell you what, he reminds you of, of the guy that Virginia Tech had last week, Tyrod Taylor. Uh, that a new freshman came in and uh, you know showed the Tigers a different look and this young man has the same type of styles and abilities of Tyrod Taylor. You know one thing we haven't seen mentioning offenses and quarterbacks we haven't seen the pistol from LSU. No. And we're not talking about Pete Maravich. <laughs> First and ten from the 25 and my goodness gracious like shot out of a cannon how about the defensive play there as number 56 perry riley just bursts on the scene as he takes care of philip tanner he just blows through the a gap coming on a run blitz and he just blew that play up you know he was one of the top three linebackers coming out of georgia he played running back and safety great speed to the ball and he had 131 stops as a senior Boy, he's going to be a good one. He's just a sophomore, 6'2", 215, but great speed. I'll tell you, 131 stops. You're tackling wow. pretty much everybody. <laughs> At what a loss of five, second and 15 now from the 30. Tigers stacking the line and blitzing on the play. And Dasher looks into the end zone. And that one could be intercepted, nearly picked off. Down there on the defensive coverage as Chris Hawkins was all over that one. Chris Hawkins played this as well as you can play at close proximity with the wide receiver. Uh, that was West Caldwell, and uh, boy, he had a good break on the ball at the right time. Almost came up with the interception. Actually went through his hands. Should have had it. But uh, that was a well-played ball by Chris Hawkins. It got a good look at him right here. Number 29 comes up. Good elevation on the ball. And Hawkins out of Brentwood, Tennessee. Might be playing against some guys he's familiar with. And now third and 15. Middle Tennessee trying to get its third, third down conversion on this drive, or should I say their third first down on this drive. A penalty flag has been thrown. That one deep. Timeout, Middle and Tennessee. It's a, their first time out of the half. Hadn't seen a penalty flag thrown on a timeout, but... Uh, it certainly stops the action, does it not? They get it so 44 nothing. the second-ranked Tigers leading Middle Tennessee, and the Blue Raiders need to talk things over. We'll be back with more from Death Valley after this network break. And welcome back. Tigers Stadium, 11.20 to go here, fourth quarter. This one started off uh, with Middle Tennessee showing some offensive prowess on their first drive, but it's been quiet time since as the LSU defense has risen to the occasion. Marlon Favorite and others standing tall tonight, 44-0, as uh, right now Middle Tennessee facing a third and 15 situation. And the few and faithful who stuck around under pressure. Dashers dragged down for a huge, huge loss. 
Coming in to make the play, among others, is Tremaine Johnson, the defensive end. Boy, this is an all-out blitz by everybody's coming. Marlon Favor right, and Luke Sanders right here. Tremaine Johnson, and boy, he had nowhere to go. He, he was hoping he could dig a hole and just bury himself. And boy, I tell you, the Tigers are engulfed by a sea of purple jerseys. Nowhere to go. You know that song, Nowhere to Run, old from the 60s? Take my word for it. That was a song. Sing it for me. But Dasher just was engulfed for a huge loss. Defetta back to punt. And a fair catch is called. And just letting it go. And it'll trickle on down to about the 12 yard line. And that's where LSU will take over, leading 44 0. And let's take a look at uh, what's happened around the SEC. These are all final scores. Of course, Mississippi State beating Auburn earlier today, 19 to 14. Big win for them. Georgia walks all over Western Carolina, 45-16 the final. Florida with a huge win over Tennessee, putting 59 on the board. And how about this one? Nick Saban and Alabama. Pulling it out over Arkansas, 41-38. They were a three-point favorite heading into that game. Wow. How That's about that? Vandy defeating Ole Miss, 31-17. And around the right side. Or the left side, I should say. And one last score as well, South Carolina, 38-3 over South Carolina State. Richard Murphy with the last carry out of uh, Rayville, Louisiana. You know, he's he's going to be a good one. He had 46 scores his last two years at Rayville. Well, he is a good one. He's a little change of pace, a little dash to him, and glides as he runs. Good, good speed. And Hatch back in at quarterback for LSU. And running the option. And Hatch hangs on and has the first down for the Tigers. You know, you got to admire him. He played that option pretty good, and he's got, uh, you know, nose for the sticks. He ran north and south, and, you know, uh, for a guy who's, who's a pretty good passer, he's more of a passer than a runner. Uh, he showed some skills here and some quicks about him, and pretty good size as well. 6'3", uh, about 235, about 230 pounds, so he's, he can deliver a good hit when his contact with the defender. from the shotgun. Looked like a little movement on the LSU offensive line on the left side. And my guess is we're going to have a... Prior to the snaps, false start. 76 offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Jarvis Jones, the true freshman out of Rosenberg, Texas. LSU will see him later on this year. And now first. And 15 after the penalty. And a pass, and a, it is complete. And it's Ricky Dixon hauling it in. And the first pass completed tonight by Andrew Hatch. Ricky Dixon is a good, good size guy, 6'2", 215, and they match him up in the slot against a strong safety, and that's a mismatch there. He, whatever it takes, hardworking guy. He was a teammate of Ryan Perilou at East St. John. And boy, I tell you, he's going to be a good one. Very strong receiver. Gain of 11 yards. On the play, but of course after the penalty makes it second and five. They're giving him credit for ten on the reception and the pass to the near side from Hatch just beyond the outstretched hands. As Murphy was the intended receiver. So it looks like Paralu's night is over as he passes for just a tick, two ticks under 300 yards. He gets 298 yards, completing 20 of 25 passes, three touchdowns, and of course just that one interception, the only blemish on his record tonight. Tigers need to get out beyond the 37. Hatch tucks it in and does not break away, and he's brought down at about the 32-yard line. Tackle on the play by Chance Dunleavy. Will this be the first punt for the Tigers? You are correct. And Patrick Fisher, the senior punter for LSU, has to 
dust off the cobwebs tonight and make his way out to put one in the air. Fisher, 14th best punter in the country this year, averaging 44.8 per on 10 previous punts and no return on that one. Inside seven and a half minutes to go in Tiger Stadium and second ranked LSU in control. We'll be back with more Tiger Vision after this local break. And not the authentic Mike the Tiger. All there there is a new one, is there not, Renee? But yes. certainly the one of the mascot variety out mingling with the Tiger faithful who've stuck around in this 44-nothing game. Nothing like coming to Tiger Stadium. Boy, what a thrill. A lot of first-timers, a lot of uh, old-timers. I don't mean old. There's just people have been here a number of times. Well, you're here. I've, I'm an old-timer, buddy, whether I come to Tiger Stadium or not. Middle Tennessee, 0 and 13 after this one against top 25 teams. Dasher trying to find an open receiver and does. And... Uh, Rare completion tonight. Has a gain of 19 on the play. Caldwell makes the grab. The true freshman out of Lexington, Kentucky. Also a baseball player. Yeah, he's a good one, too. And Dasher bought some time that time and, and found Caldwell open. Uh, just, uh, you know, he, he absorbed so much attention from the defense that, uh, you know, Caldwell could wiggle himself free for... Uh, separation from the defense and got himself open for a nice catch. First down, New Rivers. And Dasher again from the shotgun. And a corner blitz, but nicely dished off to the right side as Dasher unloads the football just in the nick of time. Marquise Branton, the fullback, a freshman out of Safner or Sefner, Florida. Picks up just a couple of yards on the play. Dasher took a shot after he released that ball. Kelvin Shepard made the stop number 11 out of uh, Snow Mountain, Georgia. And he's another fuzzy cheek freshman. That's going to be, uh, has a great future here. The purple and gold, 6'3", 228. And uh, there's not just one number 11 for LSU in this town. Mm -hmm. Ryan Perley wears the other one on offense. You can wear two number, same number as long as one's on offense, one's on defense. So don't be confused to think Perley's playing defense. And the reason there's just aren't enough numbers to go around. Dasher making a dash for it across midfield, and he's brought down at about the 44-yard line. That'll be close yes, to a first down. He is giving fits to the LSU defense right now. Pep Livingston, number 95, nearly got to him, and he uh, broke contain, got up, scooted up for a nice pickup near the first down marker at the 540 mark. It's down uh, about uh, a, a yard shy of the first down marker. And listen to this one, Renee, for the first time since very early in this contest, Middle Tennessee has gone into plus yardage. Wow. Rushing. They now have three yards rushing on the evening. The Dasher's done a good job since he's been in there, and he looks like he's got a bright future here in Murfreesboro. And he'll make a run for this one again as they were just shy of the first down on third and one. It looks like he did get it indeed. And yes, Dasher gets the first down. So we approach the five minute mark here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And the LSU Tigers in complete command as they are poised to make it 3 0 on the year. And I don't know about your math, but they came into this game having outscored their opponents 93 to 7. This will make it 147. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Or 137. You help me with that one. I take my shoes off. Yeah, I'm right. Yours and mine. Dasher with the keeper again, and he gets about four on the play. Dasher. Yeah, it's 137. I had to. Good look at Chad Jones right there. Chad Jones was a 13th round pick of the Houston Astros. Left handed pitcher, outfielder, is the number one safety in the nation. Came down to football or baseball, and Astros did step up in time, so he headed to Baton Rouge where he'll play baseball and football. He had 138 stops last year at Southern Lab, 12 interceptions, six for touchdowns. 
and he is going to be a great, great player for Coach Paul Maneri on the diamond. Batted 260 last season, three home runs, 21 RBI. Dasher under pressure as he's flushed out, and he'll run out of bounds at about the 35-yard line. About nine Tigers in pursuit on that one. Well, he's, uh, I'm very impressed with Dasher. He's so aptly named. He's got the quicks around the outside and breaks contain, gets outside quickly. And he is, you know, the coach has said he is more of a running back and he's learning the quarterback position as he goes. Even though he did have some success on the high school level, he's learning it at this level. And uh, he'll be a better one as he goes along. But Rick Stock's still a good quarterback right there. Got to look at him. Uh, he says he's, he's going to have a bright future here. Yep, good look at Stock still there. You mentioned him to being a former quarterback at Florida State. He's played or coached under Bobby Bowden, Lou Holtz, Tommy Bowden, Steve Spurrier. has really wow. been in some uh, very impressive company as a player and as a coach. Dasher takes the snap and looks like he has another first down. Calvin Shepard came crashing in from his will linebacker position, but not in time before Dasher could gain much needed first down territory. And this defense, I'm sure, in the remaining three minutes and 36 seconds, wants to keep this shutout intact. And uh, that means something to this team. Only giving up seven points in the first three games thus far. That's huge. And thanks to uh, some calculations, they've outscored their opponents this year, 137 to 7. Yes. You didn't do that alone, Doug. I know no, you, I, I need know all you, the help I can get. No, you do. <laughs> You're not kidding. Thanks for taking your shoes off. And mine, too. Boy, this is close, but. Wow. Well, this is four down. You know. It's good for a first down. You know, this would have been four down territory regardless. You, They, they have to. Um, there's no punting now. You, They want to get into the end zone, get a little uh, feel like they have gained something, has been rewarded for this drive and their efforts. And I'll tell you what, I will say this. There's no quit this Middle Tennessee team. I've, they've really taken it as much at LSU as possible. Wow. Well, you know, Stockster, one thing he talks about is perfection. He's talked about it quite a bit. And you see the wide disparity as the Tigers showing blitz perhaps offside. And the give is to Marquise Branton, and Branton is just absolutely swarmed over by this LSU defense. Leading the pack is Kelvin Shepard. Boy, he's really been in the midst of the action. He has. He's been all over the place, number 11. Good look at Branton right there, 5'11", 217. You know, another guy I see playing exceptionally well this time on defense, number 97, Al Woods. And boy, he, They talked about maybe him playing offense. He played a little offense in high school, and... Came over here and got uh, got a great motor. Shepard is really enjoying himself, having a good, you know, getting uh, gaining some attention with the coaches. And just as a, and as a true freshman, yes, can't beat stepping in and getting the number of reps he's getting in game action right here tonight. Second and eleven from the 35, and Dasher once again the ball carrier. Looks like they'll spot that one right around the 30-yard line, maybe the 31. Cotrera in to make the tackle for LSU. Cotrera's a guy who's made a lot of contributions defensively as a spot player, but also on special teams. Uh, really has gained his reputation as an outstanding special teams guy. You know, and the thing is, when you see some guys have moved from the inside to the outside, Luke Sanders is one, Jacob uh, Cotrera is another one, and, and you have different responsibilities. Inside linebacker, you read the center guard, a fullback, outside tackle, tight end or fullback. So it's different reads depending what linebacker you play. Cotrera blitzing, and the pass is incomplete. Nice. Defensive play down there by Jai Eugene, who breaks up the pass on the pass that was attended over there for Caldwell. And that was great break. This was a timing as Jacob Cotrera and Shepard come from the inside on a blitz, and he threw this pass before the break was made on the outside on a corner route uh, by Wes Caldwell. And Jai Eugene, good timing on that. Uh, made contact with the receiver just as the ball arrived, knocked it loose. Fourth down. Blue Rays are going for it. They shut them out here with uh, 96 ticks to go. Tigers have to feel good. Blue Raiders need to get down to about the 23-yard line, and they won't do that. Another sack for LSU. 
my goodness gracious, Danny McRae in there leading the charge as they get uh, another sack tonight on the Blue Raider quarterback. And he comes right through the A-gap between the guard and center. Nobody picks him up. His second sack of the evening, Danny McRae. Boy, what an athlete he is. He's excited. And the Tigers kissing Middle Tennessee goodbye, you might say. With 1.29 to go, we'll be back with more Tiger Vision after this network break. And welcome back to Tiger Stadium. We're in the final minute and a half here, and it's been a one-sided contest tonight. It's the second-ranked Tigers of LSU dominating Middle Tennessee. Middle Tennessee had just that one drive, actually their opening drive in this game, where they marched down the field, were unsuccessful, could not capitalize, and since that time it has been all Tigers. You know, even some superheroes on hand tonight. Well, I tell you what, everyone has had to be going away excited about what they've seen tonight here in Tiger Stadium on the floor. And Jimmy Walker, quarterback, is just going to take some snacks, kneel down, and bow out and hand the ball to the official and go in with the win. So your impressions tonight, Renee, and we'll talk more about that in the uh, postgame show as well. But for Ryan Paralu, this has been a very impressive first start. What a great performance in the first start of his collegiate career. Yeah, he passed the test with flying colors, and only blemish was that interception. That's really no big deal. I think he handled himself very well, managed the game, threw the ball well, uh, did a good job with his feet, and uh, I think he's capable of, of uh, handling you know, the reins of this offense if uh, need be. Something would happen to Matt Flynn uh, down the road. It'll be interesting to kind of chart the progress of Flynn. This was a, a great opportunity for LSU to rest him with that high ankle sprain because certainly, you know, with the bulk of the schedule ahead, you know, the Tigers certainly are going to need their starting quarterback and a great opportunity just to kind of give him a little more time to rest. Jimmy Welker is a guy they really like a lot. He has earned the opportunity to step in the center for the LSU Tigers. Have has been in a little mop-up duty at times from Tarzana, California. He's been here for five seasons, walk on, and boy, he is really, he's excited to be on the field and be a member of this team, and they really respect him a great deal. LSU back in SEC action next week as they play host to the old ball coach, South Carolina. And that one right here at Tiger Stadium. No time definitive yet on that one, Renee, as CBS put a hold on that one. So we'll have to wait and see. We're not sure on kickoff next week, are we? Here no, we're not. Stadium. Not yet. We get a good look at Rick Stock still. And Les Miles meeting at midfield. Forty-four nothing. The final from Tiger Stadium. Craig Stelts persevering, and we'll be back with more after we take this network break. Another dominating performance by the second-ranked LSU Tigers, who dispatched Middle Tennessee by a final count of 44 to nothing. The Tigers have now outscored their opponents 137 to seven in this. 2007 campaign and Renee Nato all you can say is what about that Tiger defense but it came in as a third ranked defense of the country number one of the SEC and they only helped themselves tonight if they could get any better with the sacks six sacks tonight by the LSU defense Craig Stelz with Willem right there uh, Danny McCray had the same the fourth quarter did Middle Tennessee even get into positive rushing yards it wasn't until the the last drive which was a fairly you know time sustaining drive but look 198 to 9 and total yards tonight LSU 505 Middle Tennessee had just a total of 90 and it could have been worse than that uh, LSU lost some yardage in the kneel downs Jimmy Walker had the last series here as they just tried to finish out this game but yeah the positives I've seen besides Ryan Perilou the offensive was was very crisp the defense was outstanding and you saw some guys which we talked about was one of the keys some freshmen and, and younger players got some game experience which will pay tremendous dividends later on this season receivers Jared Mitchell he had some freshman linemen and Perilou I can't say enough about I think he really represented himself well tonight and Demetrius Bird of course getting that nice long touchdown play and excellent excellent uh, play by the receivers as Perilou was certainly able to spread it out considerably good look at the big guy Dorsey we'll be back with more Tiger Vision 
from LSU, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, after we take this network break. We're back in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and this one's in the books as the second-ranked LSU Tigers take care of Middle Tennessee in a big, big way, 44-0. And Renee Nato, some final thoughts as the Tigers get ready to play host to the old ball coach Steve Spurrier in the Gamecocks of South Carolina next Saturday right here in Tiger Stadium. I guess you really have to dig to find something uh, that didn't go right. If, if there is one thing that gets most Coach Miles, it's the penalties, 10 penalties tonight. But uh, again, they really did a great job, offense and defense, both sides of the ball. Tremendous speed on both sides of the ball. And again, uh, you see what's, how deep LSU is, especially at quarterback and defensive line and everywhere they have. They have they can go very deep in this lineup. Well, strike up the band. The Tigers once again making quick work of their opponents. We want to thank you for joining us here tonight. It's been a good one. The atmosphere in Tiger Stadium as the Tigers just continue to march on, getting great balanced offense and uh, outstanding defensive performance all around the Tigers. 3-0, the number two team in the country going strong and looking to be even stronger. That's it from Baton Rouge. Our final score, 44-0. The Tigers get the win and improve to 3-0 overall for Renee Nato, our entire Tiger Vision crew. I'm Doug Greengard. Thanks for joining us. So long, everybody.